Hey everybody, it's Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the Hive on Thursday, September 1st. Holy Moses, you guys, it's the first day of the fourth last month of the year. Is that not crazy? I don't know how this happened, but I think that officially almost means like the summer kind of wrapped up <laughs> this past week. Um, maybe not for everybody, but that's kind of what it feels like with going into Labor Day weekend. Usually um, that's the end of the summer. So, <laughs> so I know that kids are going back to school and all that good stuff. So that usually signifies that for me. Hi, Mary Carls from Jericho and Becky Schlossnagel. Woohoo! My first two for the night that I see. Uh, so we have a great class for you, you guys. I feel a little out of my element. <laughs> Hi, Cindy Runtree. Hi, Lorna Krieger. It, it's been a little while since I've been live. Uh, hi, Sandy and Carla. I've been gallivanting all around, it seems. <laughs> um, hi, Linda Hodge. I uh, started off in New Orleans and ended off in Shipshawana, <laughs> Indiana. I'm Marsha Kulibert. Uh, thanks for sharing, Cindy. I appreciate it. And everybody else that shares this video, that is awesome. I so greatly appreciate you sharing me with your friends and family. Um, we love to have fun uh, stamping and making cards or whatever it is that we're working on. And I appreciate you sharing me with your friends and family. Um, so you guys, we had backstage. Hi, Feline. Hi, Vera. Hi, Deb. Hi, Sherry. Um, from, oh yeah, end of the summer sad and less daylight. I noticed that. Hi, Barb Baylor. Hi, Mary Lemke. Thank you so much. I did notice that. Hi, Pauline. Like, we had class here on Wednesday night and it got to be eight o'clock. Hi, Linda Hunt. And the it was getting dark outside. <laughs> Hi, Betty Pyle. So yes, less daylight is happening too. Oh, that's sad. I always love going into June and July because those are the longest days for us. Hi, Karen Forward. Um, so Backstage was great, you guys. <laughs> um, hi, Sharon Land. And it, it was a lot of g good times. Hi, Carmen Melendez. It was good to be with demonstrators again. Um, hi, Marsha Long. Hi, Kathy King. Woohoo! Um, it was good. I ended up with a lot of notes <laughs> and things, ideas, all that good stuff. Um, hi, Carol Solinsky. Um, nothing that maybe will impact you guys um, crazy big time, but it's just ideas for making sure I do this and making sure I do that. And oh yeah, um, just like stuff to help. And, um, and my focus too, I went in to this leadership wanting to know how I could help my team more. Hi, Linda Kester. Um, I have 80 or so um, Be Happy Stampers. And I, I know I'm, I do a great job with my customers and helping you guys. Um, and my team also, in a sense, are my customers as well. So I, I shouldn't feel like I don't take care of them, but I want to take better care of them, <laughs> right? So I went in there and I, wanna, I, I, I went in there with an open mind thinking, how can I better serve my team? And um, so that's where I came up with some ideas to help on that aspect. So hi, Lynn Beasley. Oh, so definitely was playing catch up <laughs> today. Um, so I, I flew back, you guys, on Monday. Mom picked me up right at the Milwaukee airport and we kept heading south and we ended up in Shipshawana. Uh, we had been doing that trip once a year, every year for, you know, for many years, right? Probably 10 or 12 years. And when the um, pandemic hit back in 2020, nobody traveled. <laughs> you didn't go places, right? I mean, we we're all kind of all in that same boat. And so we missed 2020 and we missed 2021. Bye bye, golly. We did not miss 2022. <laughs> Hi, Sharon Smith. Um, so she picked me up and we went down to, um, it's like Amish country. Uh, so Marsha Long is still in the hospital. Marsha, I thought you were going to be out by now. I just saw the comment from Marsha Kulibert. Um, So I hope that you're going to break out of there soon. <laughs> um, so we got down to Shipshwana on Monday night, and then we spend Tuesday usually going to the flea market. And then there's a whole bunch of shops down there, and we like to look for things. And um, I'm always in the market for bee stuff for my team. And so when I see earrings or if I see... Uh, knickknacks or like keychains or um, different things. Hi, Holly Pablo. I try to get that stuff and then I hold on to it until I can find an excuse to give it to somebody. So, so I was uh, bee shopping. <laughs> um, and then we actually, hi, Cheryl Thomas from Ohio. 
Actually, Jennifer Merle Hampshire, uh, some of you guys watch her and know her. Uh, she helps me put on the winter Creative Escape and the summer Creative Escape. She's the one that does usually the whole morning presentation every day. She lives about, th what should I say, an hour and 20 minutes from um, Shipshawana. And so we made our way back that way to the west and we had dinner with Jennifer. Hi, Peggy from Florida. Um, and so we had dinner. My mom and I had dinner with her husband, Joe, uh, and her on Tuesday night. They smoked uh, pork loin for us. So woohoo. So uh, <laughs> we did that and then we made our way back yesterday. So it was all good, you guys. I know that a lot of you um, wished me well and it went well. Um, it's always fun and exciting to go. Always a lot of work. I have to say it's always a lot of work, but it's always good to be home too. So back into the swing of things. And so just know that I, I tried to keep up with stuff as much as I could while I was away. Um, but I have about like, I think 120 more emails to get through. So if you're waiting on an email from me, you know, it, I'll probably hopefully have everything caught up by tomorrow. So, <laughs> um, but I tried to get people signed up for stuff as it came through. Hi, Linda Rios from Missouri. Happy Thursday and fall y'all. Yes, you got it. Hi, Pamela Leahy. So I wanted to go over a couple of things with you guys. Um, you could connect with Jennifer. Yes. Okay. So back to that story. Hi, Sandy Zidun. So Jennifer and I roomed together in New Orleans and we, um, we were done with our conference um, backstage on Saturday. Um, it wrapped up. You guys, if you didn't see it, they surprised us with the most memorable experience that anybody could ever imagine. I didn't even know it was on my bucket list, but it, <laughs> me and my natural self put it on my bucket list and then checked it off on my bucket list. Hi, Vicky Tillett. Um, you know, I'm like a check offer, right? I love to, I'll, hi, Jean Terwilliger. Jean, I still need to connect with you to see if we can connect out in Maryland. <laughs> so um, hi, Doris Munson. So I like to add things to my list just to check them off after I've done them, even if they weren't on my list before I have had a list, right? Okay. So, um, hi, Barbara Moynan. So we all met in a, a, a room at the mayor, where did we say it? The Marriott, um, at like 615 and they let us out. Like there were 520 demonstrators plus some guests and then the staff and they let us out with a marching band and they let us back in with like the, they let us there was a marching band in the front and there was a marching band in the back. Hi, Gia. I think it's Guy from Australia. I, you guys, I talked about my glasses. I need new ones. So I, I think it's Guy, G-A-I, from Australia. Awesome. Thanks for joining. Um, so it was a parade, you guys. We were in a parade. They closed off Bourbon Street. They closed off two full blocks. I think it was about two blocks. And we were part of a parade. They gave us masks to wear. They gave us umbrellas. They gave us boas, like, like those feather things. Uh, they gave us tons of beads to pass out to people. We didn't have to do anything with the beads beyond that, you guys. Awesome, right? Diana. <laughs> Hi, Diana from Kingston, New North Carolina. Uh, so we were in a parade. And if you missed it, I did a short little video in the Cards by Christine Facebook page. Um, it's like maybe 30 minute, 30 seconds to a minute, I can't remember. Just, you can hear the band playing, you can see the excitement, and it was just so cool. They made us feel so special for earning the leadership conference, and they let us be seen. There were people that were standing on the sidewalk and taking pictures and videotaping, and like, they, thanks, hi, Hildy, yep, I'm back. Um, they just, they, they, they saw us, and they recognized us, and they appreciated us, and so it was awesome to be a part of that, so it was so cool. So, hi, Mary Hartman from New Jersey, so that was a little bit of our wrap-up on Saturday night, and then on Sunday, Jen and I just bummed around uh, the French Quarter area. We went and had breakfast at Ruby Slippers. Um, gay, oh, okay, perfect, Gay. It's nice to meet you. I hope that you have a blast watching us. This is a great place to learn some stuff about stamping. <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. All right, hi, Donna Simmer from Vancouver, Vancouver, Canada. Uh, so we bummed around. We started on one end of the market and we worked our way back and it was awesome. And we got to spend some time with Brian. Hi, Carol Engelbrecht. Um, Brian and um, Kevin and Chad, all part of the Stampin' Up! team. And we got to share with them some ideas. And so we were f some of the few that stayed an extra day. And so we got some special one-on-one -on -one time uh, sharing things with them, feedback and concerns and 
positive things as well. And so it was awesome to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Stampin' Up! people <laughs> that work at the home office. Hi, Latokia Trig. Hi, Julie Ledbetter. Yes, NOLA is fun. It definitely was. So a um, couple things I want to talk to you guys about. Since I didn't catch you last Thursday, um, the but I've got a, a few things on my list, you guys, so I hope you don't mind. Um, I'm going to go through them. There's something new and exciting that they are bringing back, uh, that Stampin' Up! is bringing back. It's called Weekly Deals. And the Weekly Deals, they did this uh, many moons ago. I can't remember exactly at what point it was, maybe five years ago, six years ago, four, something like that. But for the whole month of September, there's four different weeks, and each week they're going to have uh, different things on a reduced or discounted rate. So I did just post a graphic on my Facebook page, which shows all the deals, but I'm going to flip the camera down as well and try to share it with you guys in case you missed seeing it. If you go to my Cards by Christine page, uh, you can scroll down a little bit and it's right here. It says weekly deals. And if you're looking at it from your phone, all you have to do is click on it. And then what you can do is take your fingers and make it bigger and smaller. So this week they have, what, four times three, 12 different things at a reduced rate, including like the Splendid Thought Designer Series paper, the craft note cards and envelopes, the craft boxes, the craft card stock, or the craft paper, some different embellishments, some ribbons, um, linen 12 by 12, and also the summer shadows dies. So you guys, this is the week one. It's the first through the seventh, so it starts today. And so that again is found on my Cards by Christine Facebook page. Um, and also as a reminder, if your order is over $45 using my current host code, which I have it even, it's there, um, you qualify for a free class. So um, as the weeks pass and I get the week two, so hi, Julie Bierschbach, um, um, as you, as, as the weeks pass, I will every week put the new weekly updates in there. All right. So, uh, so that's a little note, uh, that you guys, an extra little bit of savings and perks for us if we are in the market for those items. And, uh, so that's called weekly deals. Uh, just a reminder, I am taking a bus full of lovely ladies uh, to on stage in Indianapolis. So if you are in my area, the Fox Valley area of Wisconsin, so we're starting in Green Bay, picking up in Appleton, Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, and Northern Milwaukee. I don't know exactly which uh, park and ride it'll be, but somewhere in Milwaukee. Uh, I have about six spots. Hi, Carissa. I have about six spots open on my bus and not my bus, but it's the bus I'm renting. And, uh, and I have some hotel spots yet. So, uh, if anybody is listening to me and you have booked yourself to go to Indy, <laughs> that rhymed, and you want to take the easy street and have a ride on a bus with some amazing women and have an experience of a lifetime, <laughs> please reach out to me because, uh, I do have the spots and I would rather fill the bus <laughs> early to make sure I know I have it booked, you know, and have it filled uh, versus waiting till the last minute. Plus, there's some awesome personalized gifts I'm doing with um, regards to engraving on something, and I need to start working on that stuff soon. So I'm hoping uh, in case there's anybody else that needs to uh, want to get a ride, uh, just reach out to me. Um, when I flip the camera down, my email address is there or my phone number, and you can reach out and let me know if you're interested. So woo for us! right? Okay. So now we just had an event and now it's time to focus on on stage for me. So we are going to have a blast. It's going to be an experience um, just like Stampin' Up! did for us um, in New Orleans. I'm going to make this an experience for those that are part of my group. Um, a remarkable one. You know, it's all about, you know, being together and the little gifts and like all the little details that go into it. Feline, I wish you could go too. Next year, hopefully, there will be uh, something that all of us can get together uh, in the United States that everybody can come together. And also, um, oh, Barbara, you signed up for the one in Montreal. Fabulous. That's awesome. Um, so uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, for those that are going to Indy and you are in my community of people who watch me, I think I'm going to set a time that we could get together and meet somewhere. Thanks for sharing, Mary Carls. Um, yes, Marsha, you have to sign up with Stampin' Up! to be a 
hobbyist, like a hobby shopper or a demonstrator. Yes. The only way you can attend Stampin' Up! conferences is to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator or discount shopper. And so, yeah. So if anybody wants to sign up to attend this awesome event, you can still sign up. I think registration goes through September 20th. Um, Cheryl's going to Pittsburgh. Perfect. So I want to, I'll designate a time, maybe over the lunch hour, that anybody who knows me and my Be Happy Stampers and my Cards by Christine, we're going to get a big, awesome group picture. So stay tuned for that if you're going to Indy. Um, okay, so that's the bus trip. Um, there's another thing that launched today. It's called Perfect Partners. There are six die sets that are available um, while supplies last, you guys. So I wouldn't wait till the last day um, and expect to get them because it usually works out that it, I should say, it usually doesn't work out that way. Um, there are six different... Um, Oh man, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna. Show, I have the flyer here. I'm gonna show it to you. But while I um, go get it, I'm gonna flip down and show you some happy mail that I got. I got these three beautiful cards to show you. I have this flyer. We'll talk about that in a second. But as long as I got you guys looking at some cards. Uh, this one, <laughs> Cheryl Possident, um, she sent me some money, you guys. It was a dime and a dollar. <laughs> um, it was really cute that I got it. And so, Cheryl, I did get this, and I'm going to reach out to you and let you know I got that. But um, that one came through. Isn't that so pretty? So simple, but so beautiful because that designer series paper from New Horizons was so awesome that all you had to do was stamp some trees on it, and it just was awesome uh, to make beautiful cards. This one comes from Shirley Malarkey. Uh, this is, I love the monochromatic touch on this with the white and it's orchid oasis orchid i was gonna say opulence but that's an older color um i think it's or what is that color oasis yes or orchid oasis so that one's from shirley and this card came from francis rodriguez oh i liked that set it was from a couple catalogs ago i got it and i I, got, I never used it actually so um i'm so happy to have a sample with it now so this one came from francis a very pretty card um it makes me feel like i'm at a little cafe in paris i think <laughs> so uh, that's the happy mail that i got to share with you guys um feline says your perfect bundles came in yesterday oh the waterfall is so cool you know Oh, that, yeah, you, I got to show, I actually have it too, Feline. I got to show it to you guys. I, I was amazed at what all came in this waterfall. So there are six stamp sets, you guys, that Stampin' Up! already had, existing stamp sets, Apple Harvest, Fresh Cut Flowers, perf um, this little birthday piggy, Trimming the Tree, Waterfall Canyon and the Yeti to party. And so what they did is they came up with dyes that go with it. Thanks, Carla Cordes. Um, it was great. <laughs> um, they came up with dyes to go with them and offering them as a bundle as well. Thanks for sharing, Melanie Foy. Melanie, I'm not sure if you saw it, but you were the winner of the half off bundle last month for Abigail Rose. And I um, didn't hear back from you if you wanted or not. So I need to connect with you, Melanie. Um, on, yes. Oh my gosh. So Doris, good call. I want to see the bundle used too for the waterfall, but I'm going to show it to you. So Peggy got the waterfall, but did not use it yet. And there's a lot of pieces. Oh my gosh. So I wanted to show you guys that. So I was uncertain about getting it, but when they came out with dyes, I was like, holy mo, my goodness. So many dyes. So this is the waterfall Canyon stamp set which was in the annual catalog. And then these are the dies that are while supplies last. Uh, just so many cute little trees, the waterfall, just oh, just so many. I, I, I'm gonna make a card for Tyler <laughs> with this set and hopefully I can knock his socks off because he loves nature and waterfalls. So that one's back here, that whole bundle. Um, perfect, Melanie. Yep, if you want to call me after class or tomorrow, that's perfect. Um, Waterfall Canyon was $53 for, the, for both things, which is awesome. So, yeah, I couldn't believe it. So, you guys, this Perfect Partners, um, it is September 1st through the 30th. So, today's the first day, and then it goes through the 30th. And then on top of it, if you want to add anything else to your order, the weekly deals are there. Oh, Melanie would love the bundle. Perfect. Okay, well, we'll connect Melanie on that. So I'm glad that you want it. Hi, Bonnie Kelly. Hi, Gwen Petrashek. Petrashek. <laughs> I had a great time. Okay, so that's the perfect partner. So we talked about that. 
Okay. All right. So then, um, just a reminder, uh, I've had a bunch of new people. I think there are probably 10 new people that subscribed to get my emails. And I made sure I, um, hi, Julie Poindexter. Um, I made sure that I added you guys to the tag. Um, to sign up for newsletter, if anybody else is new to me and hasn't been getting emails from Cards by Christine, um, if you go to my website, um, which is cardsbycrispy.com, there's a way for you to just enter your email address and then um, you'll have to confirm it and then I'll see it come in and then you'll start to see emails about upcoming classes from me. And so it's awesome that um, then you see everything come into your in inbox. Okay, so what else, you guys? We, um, wa I wanted to remind you, there's a Radically Retro Swap Party. It's coming up October 16th. Um, if you want any of the details on it, all you have to do, I'm going to flip my camera down. I'm, <laughs> I'm writing my host code. I'm going to see if you guys um, notice if I did it or not. So hang on. Um, <laughs> I'm multitasking like I, <laughs> I think a lot of people do. Um, I just wrote my host code there. But if you guys, the Radically Retro Swap Party, if you want the details for it, you just go into my website, cardsbycrispy.com. You go to the events calendar, toggle to October, click on the 16th, and It'll tell you all about the Radically Retro Swap Party. I think we're at two groups now. Um, thanks for sharing, Linda Hunt. Hi, Dar. Hi, Elaine. Um, the samples on the wa website for the waterfall are for the floral one. Oh, man, Cheryl. I didn't notice that. <laughs> I hope they fix it. Um, so Radically Retro Swap Party, you guys, all the details are in here. Okay? So, and then if you want to sign up, you click on the here button right there, and it takes you into a sign-up sheet. So just in a nutshell... What is the Radically Retro Swap Party? Uh, it's an excuse for you. Do we need to add mailing envelopes with the cards for the swap? So, um, Penny, um, you just need to put all of your... So, anybody who is participating in the swap, the it's a clear Stampin' Up! preferred envelope, uh, like a cellophane em envelope. If it's not Stampin' Up!, that's okay. We really like Stampin' Up! envelopes <laughs> and products, but if it ends up being um, a different brand of a clear cello or cellophane bag, it's okay. Um, but every card needs to have the cellophane bag. So um, in a nutshell, hi, Anita. Hi, Linda Kester. Oh, thanks for sharing, Linda Kester and Diana. I appreciate it. Uh, and Sharon, thanks for sharing. Um, if you um, are participating in the swap, I've, you've already signed up. You're good to go. We're looking at about two groups right now. Um, you can sign up. At, there might be a third. There might not. It just depends on how many people sign up. Hi, Marilyn Edens from Georgia. Um, all in all, I think what I've been trying to say is it's Stampin' Up! Retired Product. We wanted an excuse to use retired product in a swap. And because normally when my team and I swap, we use current product. Uh, and um, when I do the customer swap, it's not always only Stampin' Up! Hi, Doral. Um, how do you say your last name? You're late, so you'll catch the replay. No problem. It's Hoffaker, Hoffaker, maybe Hoffaker, <laughs> um, but no white mailers. Penny, I think what you mean is like there's just a paper white envelope. No, you don't need any paper envelopes with the swaps. It's just a clear um, Stampin' Up! envelope or a clear non-Stampin' Up! envelope. Um, and so it's just an excuse to use a Stampin' Up! stamp set, all Stampin' Up! product, everything retired except for current colors can be used. Oh, Cheryl, they fixed it this morning. Perfect. Okay. Um, if anybody wants more information about it, read the event. Um, hi, Vicki Fritz from Indiana. Uh, and then you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. I love to help if you need it. Um, when will you let us know how many are in a group? So, Elaine, um, so the first group, the, like, they're maxing of 20 in a group. Um, I know people have already started making their cards, and they're doing 20, right? Um, it's going to be the last group that might not have 20 in it. It might be a little shy. So um, people have until September I think 19th to sign up or September 16th. So we had a couple more weeks of sign up. So um, as soon as I have it closed, I will announce the final numbers. Um, yeah, Feline got in on the swap. Yay, using retired product. Woohoo. Okay, so that's that and that. Okay, the card benefit, you guys. Oh, before I talk about the card benefit, celebration board number 11 is full and uh, the 12th board is half full. So we're going to do drawings for that later. Uh, so I just wanted to call that out there so we don't forget. But holy Moses, you guys, we went onto our 12th board. That is awesome. Okay, 
So a couple weeks ago, I talked to you guys about the card making benefit. Um, that is October 1st, which is also World Card Making Day. And originally it was gonna be um, an MS card making benefit like we've done the last few, like every time I should say, I think we've done this benefit maybe five or six times. And I asked my team if it was okay if we donated to a different cause this time and they were okay with that. You guys are all okay with it. And I was looking for feedback on which organization and I, I finally figured it out today who we're going to donate to. Um, it's called um, OUR, O-U-R, which stands for Operation Underground Railroad. And if you want to go check out their website to see where the money's going, um, their website is ourrescue.org. Um, there is, I read through everything. I feel so good about sending our donation to this group. Um, I was hoping to, yeah, isn't that awesome, Dab 12 boards. <laughs> I was wanting and thinking about keeping um, the donation with um, an organization that is in the United States, um, not necessarily worldwide, but after reading everything about this organization, I just was blown away by the person who started it, how who's all involved with helping, the rescuing of children. Um, like I signed up to get their newsletter, their emails, their texts, everything. And I got a text the other night that said that they just had an operation in the Dominican Republic where they rescued 80 children and 16 people were arrested in this ring. And it just, I feel, I felt a connection and I felt moved by this group. And so that's where we're gonna go with or who we're gonna go with. Um, so again, it's Operation Underground Railroad. If you want to check it out and get in the know on what's really... Hi, Francis Rodriguez. I'm glad to catch that you could catch me too. Um, if you want to understand, it's like the real, the real, I want to say the, I, I, there's lots of things plaguing us this day and age, but one of the, the biggest things I think in this day and age is the modern version of slavery that we have with our um, women, children, um, even men, um, with uh, the, t the trafficking of women, children, and men, and boys, everybody. It's like, it's, we don't even know the extent, I don't know the extent to it. I'm learning more every day about it, and it's just starting to feel like something that I want to help um, combat because everybody has a story and those people that are coming out of it, I really want to make a difference with them. So, and every little bit helps. I know that we raise usually about two to 2000 to 2500, but the person who I talked to said every little bit helps. So if you guys um, are interested in getting out, I'll, I'll share that too. Like in an email, when I send out the email for the card making benefit, um, it's just, the more people that know what's really happening and going on, I think the more that we're not going to tolerate it in the long run. So yay, I felt good about that decision. So um, again, it's ourrescue.org. There's videos, there's so much information out there that um, you can look into. So whew, you guys, great selection, good. I, I felt good about it too. So um, a reminder, what's coming up next week, Thursday is mystery card making night. Uh, Kelly will be doing it for me, you guys, because Tyler and I are doing our last hoorah rah camping trip of the year and we're heading out to Maryland and so we leave Wednesday morning and we come back um, Monday noonish. Uh, so for those of you who do the club class with me on that Monday night I will be back for club class. <laughs> I'll have everything set and ready so that if we roll in we can get the car unpacked and we have class and so um, like Kelly's gonna do mystery card making night with me. Um, all the clue, the clue number one has been put out there and um so you should find those details in the event. So, whew, okay. Ah, sounds like a great choice for our fundraiser. Yay, I'm happy you guys are agreeing with that, um, that, that organization. So I just, I, I want to challenge everybody to go out there to ourrescue.org um, and just read their story. Wow. Um, so um, Sherry Stewart, I'm going to be at Cunningham Falls State Park. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And uh, I know Jean Terwilliger is an hour and a half away, and so we're trying to make connections. And if if you're close to that too, that area, I'd love to figure out how we can even see each other to give each other hugs. <laughs> I'm I'm all about even a quick, like five minute, 10 minute hug somewhere like talk. <laughs> we make it happen. <laughs> um, I did that in Hawaii um, and it was awesome with Patty Robinson. So hi, Laura Sullivan. Laura, I missed Laura, but 
Laura, I did realize you are not too far off the beaten path to get to where we're going in Erie, Pennsylvania. So I was going to check out um, how close you are to the highway. Um, so Laura Sullivan, too, I hope you got your power back. Laura had some of those storms that went through. We were in Shipshawana and the storms went through. Jennifer lost a whole bunch of sunflowers. They got just demolished. Uh, I know Laura lost power and I hope it came back. Laura, I think you talked about it coming back last night. So it's not easy or fun to be without power. So all right, I'm going to flip down, you guys. If you missed this last week, Thursday, Kelly did the paper pumpkin class. Wow, I came back. I love it when I have, this must have been her alternative. Um, that doesn't look like a normal paper pumpkin card because of the base. Um, I love coming back to having all these beautiful cards on my counter space here. Um, here's another alternative she did with um, a special fold here. Uh, you guys, I don't have any of this one left. Um, it's all gone, but um, you guys in general, they it, everybody loved it. Jennifer gave me a bracelet, and so she had the bracelet attached to this, which is a little, she redesigned it, and she had the bracelet attached to this. So here's another alternative. I feel like there's a card. No. Oh, here it is. Thank you for all you do. Oh, so that was from Jennifer. And then I didn't swap down at Backstage, but this came from Kathy Winter. Um, she still gave me a card. Um and she is from An Ankeny, Iowa. So, um, so I saw Kathy. I met Kathy many, many years ago, and I've been seeing her at events throughout the years, and it's awesome. So, uh, all right. So these are the cards that we're going to do tonight, you guys. Beautiful. Yes, Cindy, they are beautiful paper pumpkin cards. Um, the, it was a, you guys. So Jennifer is on the paper pumpkin advisory board, my friend Jennifer, and she said that, <laughs> that, that, that it was like one of the best paper pumpkins. They almost, like, they had enough, but it was close that there's no extra paper pumpkins that they're going to put in the online store, I guess. So, um, so yes, Julie used it for a wedding card, and Deb said that Kelly did a great job. Good, I'm glad. I didn't watch it. Um, I was doing other stuff Thursday, so I haven't caught the, the video yet. So, all right, you guys. Whew. So we have ink, paper, scissors tonight, and I do have at the moment, two of this class left. So if you're watching the video or watching the live right now, um, if you're interested in it, then um, please comment so I see it because I am down to only two. Um, I'm afraid that if you email me that you want it and then somebody else comments in here, I basically didn't see the email and I've already commented to the person. So um, if you are interested in the ink, paper, scissors, um, for tonight, it's called Lovely and Linen. It's actually the officially the August paper, um, ink, paper, scissors, but it's happening today. Um, just comment. Hopefully, I'll see it, and we'll go from there. If for some reason I don't reply to you verbally that it's yours, uh, stop, maybe comment again. Um, so Linda and Deb both said it's the best one ever. So I love sunflowers, and so I was really excited <laughs> for this pumpkin, too, you guys. It was good. Um, so... I'm going to do roll call. So if you are watching with me live, um, please reach out or please say hi here. Um, is the holiday or is the October paper pumpkin the holiday one? Yes. Okay. So Linda Grady, um, the September one is going to be the Halloween one with treats. Um, just to let everybody know what Jennifer told me about the September paper pumpkin for Halloween is that just because it says it's treats, do not be discouraged. They've designed the paper pumpkin in a way that you can easily convert these treat things or whatever they are into cards, okay? So it's very easily adaptable to making them into cards. So if you're needing Hall Halloween cards, hi Donna from Connecticut, um, consider still getting it um, versus skipping it. Hi, Ann Bellinger. Yes, we haven't gotten started. I've been rattling off for like the last half hour stuff. <laughs> so um, then for October, hi, Linda Hall, October's paper pumpkin will be holiday cards. They usually do holiday cards. And then the November paper pumpkin is usually holiday treat stuff. Um, hi, Wendy Ellison. So, so again, September is for Halloween. October is holiday cards. And November is holiday treatsy stuff. Um, and then usually come December, they are doing something to promote the new year. Um, hi, Deborah Butt from Pennsylvania. 
Um, I miss you too, Linda. <laughs> All right, so roll call. If you're here watching live, say hi. And if you're catching the replay, you can always say hi too. Um, hi, Jacqueline from Australia. All right, we have Deanne Estelle. Hi, Alice Samsell from Indiana. All right, number one was Deanne Estelle, Sandy Wicklander, Angela Knutson, Ellen Brover, Lynn Beasley, Mary Carls, Latokia Trigg, Jennifer Jones, Ann Bellinger, uh, Julie Bierschbach. Hi, Arliss Knoop coming in late. I'm so glad you could catch us. Um, so we had Ann Bellinger, Julie Bierschbach, Jeannie Parker, Kathy King, Judy Immel, Diane Bogenhagen, Jill Butzine, Carmen Melendez, Cheryl Thomas, Christina Heiser, Judy Krieger, Karen Wettstein, Chris Dudarenki, Hildy Vilches, Karen Forward, Barbara Moynan, Sue Somerville, Doris Munson, uh, Christina Bernards, Karen Cotton, Helen Chase, Carolyn Ketchmark, Marsha Dean times two. Uh, she got a second kit. Woohoo. Hi, Becky Roar. <laughs> Hi, Becky Roar. Becky Roar. <laughs> Linda Hunt, Shirley Malarkey, Mary Lemke, Sarah Merchant, Carol Selinsky, Carla Cordes, uh, Sue Spiegner, Vera Anderson, Annette Rollin, Dion Miller, Cheryl Possident, uh, and Gail Seawick. So again, um, two left in case anybody would like to sign up. You just got to reach out to me. Um, when I do the door prize drawing later, if you do sign up during class, I will make sure to add your name so that you get in on the door prize drawing. So we'll do a door prize drawing later. I also, um, hi, Charlene. Otero, <laughs> you guys, I, I talked to my mom about it. I'm like, mom, should I spend the money and get new glasses? And she said, yes, do it. It's only money and you'll be better. It'll be easier for you to see. And I'm like, yep, I should do that. Because if you guys see me doing this, it's meaning I'm trying to get into read. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that was, I lost my train of thought there. But I do have the two extra. So um, we're going to get going on this. Now this is the ink, paper, scissors where you get a goodie bag, you guys. So this is a product-based class. Um, if it's porch pickup, it's 30, and if it's mailing, it's 36, and it's one where you get uh, all your stuff that you need in it. Um, steamy Georgia, whoo, that <laughs> sounds hot. <laughs> all right, so I'm actually, this is Angela Knudsen's. I have hers. I don't think she will mind this one bit because usually I take somebody who um, is local to me and I use their kit because you will get in your goodie bag, you get bifocals. No, Mary Lemke, I will never be able to do bifocals. Uh, long story short, I had a cataract in my left eye when I was 30 and I had to have cataract surgery and they implanted a lens in this eye that allows me to see distance. So I have 20 in this eye distance, but I have blurry close up. So I'm starting to develop a cataract in my right eye and it hasn't changed in three years. Uh, my eye doctor said it's the same as it was back in 2019, I think he said, or 2020. And he is like, he asked me the question. He's like, what are you going to do when it's like, you've lost your vision in your right eye? I'm like, uh, well, we're going to implant a lens for close up, which is what I have now. I have mono vision. I can see distance in one eye. I can see close up in the other eye. And at this point, what's happening is I hit 40 and this eye is getting worse close up. <laughs> the problems that we have, you guys, I, you're not alone. You're not, you, everybody goes through different things, right? And so, so in my mind, I will never have bifocals because they'll implant a close up lens in this eye. So I'll continue with my mono vision for the rest of my life, I hope. <laughs> so, but for right now, the glasses need to get updated, the prescription. They need to make this one stronger. And they need to make this one so I can see better close up. So um, that a few years ago, the right one isn't ripe yet. Yes, exactly, Donna. My right one isn't ripe yet either. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a little story about Mika, if you guys didn't know that. So, um, so this is what you guys get in your goodie bag. You'll have this pink polyester ribbon. It is so cool. I did not use this until I started working on in this class. And it's so fun. Um, yes. Not enjoying that aspect of aging. Jacqueline, I I never thought, I'm like, oh, when I hit 40, I'm not gonna have that happen to me. Well, you don't have a choice. <laughs> and when you get older, things happen, I guess. Um, it all it generally happens to every, life is hard, but God is good. I completely agree, Francis. You, 
whatever you get dealt to you, you just make the most of it and the best of it is what I guess I could say. So you roll with it. Um, it's, a, it's a challenge. You definitely don't want to mess with the eyes. Absolutely not. You guys, whew, I hate having anybody around my eyes. So it was really hard having that cataract surgery. The um, They have you like kind of tucked in. Your arms are like secure and you can't really move. And the thing starts coming at you. And I started to pull my arms out to push it away. And so they basically sedated me and I was out for the whole thing. And so I'm like, okay, good. Just, I don't want to know what's going on. Um, anyways, that's another side note. But you guys also have these solid faceted gems. Peggy says she loves the feel of the ribbon. Oh, I know. It's so soft. It's like, oh, it's, just, it's so soft. I love it. Okay, then you guys, in your kit, you'll also have your quarter pack. Um, can I please have one kit? Feline, you are so funny. I thought you told me you didn't like this one, but yes, um, you can definitely be on my list for this one. <laughs> um, I love it. Okay, I, <laughs> I love it. Um, Penny Powell, I will take a kit for this class. Okay, you guys, that's basically it then. All right, because I have one lit set aside for Audrey um, Jacobson. She hasn't confirmed for 100% positive, but then I think I'm good. So, um, yeah. Oh, the cataract surgery makes my heart pound really bad. So, sedate me too. Yes, right, Cindy? Exactly, sedate me too. So, in case you guys missed it, Feline and Penny have my last two kits, so I don't have any left. So we're going to work with Angela's paper for cutting. So this is the class where you get a quarter pack of the paper and you can use it on your cards. If you don't like the pattern I picked, you can always change it. And then you guys in your kit, um, you'd have your four card kits that we're going to be making. So we're going to cut up Angela's designer paper. I know that she will greatly appreciate that because then she doesn't have to do it herself. And we are going to work on that. Um, Feline, I will make them work with something you already have. Yay, perfect. I love it. Okay, so I'm going to move. So the ink pad colors, you guys, I use Sweet Survey, Evening Evergreen, Petal Pink, and Night of Navy. Those are what I believe were the ink colors. I'm going to just set those off to the side. Um, the PDF, in case you guys um, are still looking for it, I did email it out on Sunday night, Okay. So you should have it in your inboxes. If you didn't see it, check your spam folder. I will tell you guys, honestly, um, a lot of my stuff goes to your spam boxes. So I always encourage you, hi, Pam Simmons from North Carolina. I always encourage you to look in your spam boxes before asking if um, I've emailed you because generally people find it in their spam boxes or your junk mail folder. Um, so Donna looks forward to it. Perfect, you guys. I got home last night from my trip and Tyler had a present for me. Uh, Tyler doesn't give me lots of presents. Uh, we, we don't do a lot of presents, but he had a shirt for me and he already had it washed too. He found a happy, humble, and a be, be happy, be humble, be kind. Um, and so I thought it was so sweet. He got me something and... <laughs> And uh, it had to do with the hive and being happy and all that good stuff. So, um, so yes. Um, so Denise loves the paper. Um, yeah, it's so beautiful. It's very bright and cheerful. Um, the other thing too, I got to tell you guys a story, really quick. If you I, you can't really see it from down here so much, but you can see that <laughs> right there. <gasps> on on Friday, I was walking through the hallway. Um, I had just left my hotel room. I had Tyler's ring on. I was texting or emailing or responding or doing something on my phone, totally not paying attention to where I was walking. I thought the end of the wall came and I was going to round the corner to go to the elevator. Uh, and I, my, I, my uh, eyesight was off. Something was wrong um, with my prediction. <laughs> I literally ran into the wall <laughs> while I was uh, doing something on my phone and it went boom. <laughs> and there were two people a security guard or officer, somebody that was just surrounding the corner. And there was a lady who was cleaning rooms that was in the room. And as soon as I hit the wall, I looked up, nobody was there, but within a half of a second, both of them came out at the same time. And I'm like, hi guys. And in my head, I'm thinking nothing to see here, <laughs> but oh my gosh. Um, it would have been the story for America's Funniest Videos, like having that been videotaped and me being stupid about walking into a wall while I'm not paying attention. So, <laughs> 
So anyways, that's what that on my hand is all about. It didn't really hurt. It didn't really bleed. But you know, if you like scratch yourself or like you um, hit something kind of hard and you just like kind of roll off that top layer of skin, that's all that happened. It never even really bled. So it just scabbed over. But anyways, in case you guys are wondering, I thought that I told that... Tyler laughed at me. He's like, you need to pay better attention. And I'm like, yup. No, Cindy, I did not break the ring. Thankfully, my skin was there to catch it so that it went into my skin and my skin was a good buffer for it, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. So it looks worse than what it is. It really didn't hurt. I just, I never even put a bandaid on it because it never, it never bled. So thank goodness. Cause Tyler would have had my hide if I would have broken, if I would have broken his ring. Not good. Not good. So, all right, you guys. We're going to cut some paper. So this one is a good one. You guys, if you caught mystery card last month, this is the one. Yes, the security camera in the hallway. If they were watching that pretty intently, that would have been hilarious. Okay, let's start with this one. And then we're going to cut in, in this order. So, all right. Yeah, something. Yeah, and it wasn't even that embarrassing because if they saw it, they didn't tell me they saw it. And I, I feel like nobody was around me when it happened, but yeah, it was just funny. I definitely laughed at myself. So, all right, you guys. So we, hi, Kathy Winter. Kathy Winter. I just showed everybody the card you gave me um, at Backstage on Friday night. I was so appreciative that you gave me a card. Um, all right, you guys. So we're going to be doing uh, this card first. So for those that are doing the class with me, you're going to need to grab your paper trimmer. So what's special about ink, paper, scissors is I show you how to cut the paper. Generally, other classes that I do, I have everything all cut ahead of time and I don't really show you the process of cutting paper. So sometimes I find it's people's biggest obstacle is cutting paper at home. And so I've done a tip Tuesday on it, but I recommend if you guys are not comfortable cutting paper, use scrap paper, right? Cut a piece of copy paper up or something else before cutting your designer paper. Um, so it's important like just to feel comfortable cutting um, and knowing that there's two blades on here, one's for cutting and one's for embossing. So we're gonna be primarily using this um, darker one for cutting. Yeah, Kathy, everybody loves your card, it's awesome. So you guys, in the PDF, I would have the measurements written for you as well. Um, so you can always refer to that. Um, so this one has three pieces of designer paper plus a little one at the bottom here, which is that little guy. So we're gonna cut this one first, this top piece. Oh, I lost my ruler. Um, I haven't gotten a new one yet. So somewhere I, it's gone, it's three by four. So this is a really nice, easy number for us on this one. So it's three by four. Hi, Marilyn Skorker. Um, there is a pattern to this paper. I feel this paper is going this way and not this way. So when I cut this, I know that I need to be three inches by four. Um, Oh, yeah, Deb, you're pretty close to her, I bet. <laughs> um, so we want to do three inches and then four. Um, hi, Charlene. Uh, this, you know, so you have a decision. Do you want to cut off this first or do you want to cut off this first? And if I look at the back side, um, this blue didn't get used. Oh, it got used right here. So knowing this, and this blue also has a direction to it. Right, so we're gonna look at this. This is also three inches, right? So we're gonna be strategic about how we cut this. So this needs to be three inches here and we need a four inch section. And then we are gonna probably most likely, this is two inches. Um, we're gonna be able to use that other section. So we're left with a whole chunk over here. So with the paper going this direction, and you can also tell on the back, you know, it's like this. We're gonna cut it at three inches right here. Okay, so don't need this at the moment. And it's three by four. So we wanna turn our paper and cut a four inch section. So that piece is this one for this card right here. Now, the way that we have this left is there's a blue piece. This blue piece was used on this card. Okay, so we basically, like I guess the saying is, killed two birds with one stone because now we have these two pieces already set for these two cards. And I'm gonna take this out of the plastic so that we can see what's going on. All right, so now we need, let's see what that bottom is. Oh, so there is a section here. 
uh, a half inch strip on the bottom, which is this piece right here. When you're cutting such a little piece like that, it probably isn't, you're not gonna see a pattern very much. So what I'm gonna do, instead of going into my next sheet here, I'm just gonna cut a little half inch strip off of here. So there's three inches left. So I'm gonna bring it back to two and a half inches. So you could either measure a half inch here or at two and a half there. Either way, it's giving you, we're gonna cut a little strip off and that is gonna be for our section on the bottom, but then we need to cut it at um, five and a quarter, okay? So as long as we, so you guys, what you wanna do with that little piece is completely up to you. I really don't know um, if you wanna save that or throw it, but that little strip, when you have that cut and that's glued on the bottom like this, you really can't tell which way the pattern goes. And so that's why I opted just to cut that little strip off. So that is a half inch by five and a quarter, and that's for our inside piece. All right, so I don't believe that this is used for anything else. So then let's go into our pile here and try to find our next piece. Um, we're gonna do this green here. It's like diamonds, it's like diamonds in the sky. So. Let's look at the back. I don't believe that got used on anything else. Um, because it's morning here, I will leave in 10 minutes and watch the replay. Sounds good, Jacqueline. I hope you have a good rest of your day. So this one, you guys, the measurements on this one is three and three quarter by one and one and a half, okay? So three and three quarter. Now, I don't see a direction to this, so we would refer to this as non-directional designer series paper. So it's at three and three quarter. So I'm gonna cut it at three and three quarter. And then we need a one inch section. So I'm gonna cut it at one inch. Now you could have used the whole mat back there, but I like to be a paper conservationist. So that's our little piece for this side. And then I said the other one is one and a half. And so I'm gonna cut at one and a half and I left my factory edge on this side um, and I cut it at one and a half. So that's what we need for this card right here. Okay, so if I were you guys, I would take these pieces and what you should do is grab your card and it's the one that has this green in it um, finishing Christmas card designs. Woohoo! You're ahead of the game. So put that in with this one. And then when the time comes, hi, Stacy Burns, we will, um, work on that card, um, in a bit. All right. Now let's see what else let's work on. Hmm. Let's find the next piece here. I don't think we use that for anything. And, um, next piece here, there's this green one. We'll need that for the last card. And this one's the last card. Hi, Cindy Bistrom. All right, we need these two pieces. So you have here, let's think about this. This is, let's see what this one is. This is one and a little bit. And I'm the reason I wanna bring this up because the back side of this one, if I'm, hi, Donna Grushki, is the, this one. All right. So did you see what I'm, I'm thinking about ahead that the back side of this is that and what I'm trying to figure out is can I fit them all in one like one length going this way so this is three and three quarter and if we take three and three quarter onto this we'll have enough so that's perfect all right so what's important is the stripes are going this way all right and this one's a little bit finagly. I have three DSP strips and they're all three and three quarter high. Hi, Lisa Spacek. And they're one and five eighths wide. Okay. So let's do our uh, one. <laughs> if they get made, yes. Half the battle is making them. So it's, I said one and five eighths wide. So let's go one and five eighths here. And that, because my stripes are, they're going vertical. If you would rather see your stripes going horizontal, now's the time. You gotta figure that out when you're cutting because it would look cool with them going this way as well. But I went with them this way. So we're gonna do one and five eighths this way. And then I said three and three quarter. So three and three quarter. 
So that's this piece. And then as long as I have this piece in my hands, the inside of this card is like a gourmet, so it opens like this, right? So that is five, and it is by, hang on, five by three and three quarters. I just wanted to make sure I said that right. Five by three and three quarters. So five high, and now again, the direction doesn't matter. Five by three and three quarters, all right? So this is your inside piece for here. And the inside here has a half inch strip by three and three quarters. So there's this little strip that's left. So instead of throwing that away, let's just use it. So cut it at three and three quarter and whatever you wanna do with this little guy is your call. But this'll be our inside piece for right here, all right? So those are those two for now. So let's set those off to the side. And now grab this piece back and we need two more. And again, it was three and three quarters by one and five eighths. So um, let's think about this. So I'm gonna do one and five eighths by three. I guess it depends. Like I try to minimum, like do minimal cuts, you guys, if I can. So, but I'm just gonna do three and three quarter by one and five eighths this way. So that is this piece here. And then grab it again and pull it over to one and five eighths. So that's right here. So that is everything for this card. And if I were you, I'd grab your card kit and it's the one with the soft succulent base, which is this guy. <laughs> We're gonna put those right in there so we have those ready when the time comes. All right, so we've got this one done. And what's left on this, we need to do some triangles and here we need to do some of this. So this piece is also the one that's used here, but we can't use these pieces. If you wanted, this piece right here could get used for your envelope flap. Do you see that? It's the perfect size to put on your envelope flap, okay? So that is something you could do with this. I'm gonna leave that in there for Angela, so in case she wants to do that. Um, and this, needs to sit here with this card. And let's grab our next pieces here. So we didn't need that anymore. We'll put some scraps in the front. We need this orange piece and then the other piece that looks like that. So this one and this one and the dime. So if you guys watched the mystery card last month, you kind of saw how to do the, the diagonal cutting. And that starts off with um, three and three quarters by five. Um, and it's great to do this with a non-directional DSP. If it's directional, it's really hard to, to get it to go right. Uh, it's just, it's, it, you have to think about it more. But what you're gonna do, and this is for two, right? So you're gonna cut it at five by three and three quarters. These are extra. And then you need to do this one as well. So it would look like a traditional mat, but then three and three quarters by five. Let's do this one at five this way and three and three quarters this way. Like I had mentioned, this is for two cards now, you guys. Um, you could just leave this be all the triangles, but I like the idea of two triangles matching and two triangles matching, right? So to get the diagonals cut, you have to put the one corner right on the track and the other corner right on the track. And then because of you starting on the corner, uh, Kelly did a tip Tuesday on this actually, uh, technique Thursday. I don't start from the top and push it down because it'll take that corner and squish it. So I always start a little bit down from the corner, go up and then bring it back down. And the trick on this is to not cut fully to the end. So my triangles are still together. So that helps from a holding it together perspective. If you do cut it off, it's okay. You're just gonna have to kind of hold it better. 
but you now twist it and you put that other corner there and the other corner down here and you only have to hold it on the one side. Same thing, I'm not gonna start at the bottom or the top, I'm gonna start part way in so then I can bring it up. And now what happens is you have two that are separated, this one's not, but all you do is you grab your scissors and as straight as possible, you just cut it like that. Okay, so it is kind of important. Um, no, not really. If you were gonna do one pattern and just not intermix them, you would want to keep these in this order and not accidentally flip these because the patterns won't match. So you do wanna keep that together if you're doing all the same. But if because we're pulling in a second piece, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set these two here. And then if you guys wanna make another card, you're gonna have these triangles already set. Okay, so then the same concept here. We're going to line up our corners and then start a little bit down and then don't cut it all the way off, but get close. Now turn it, get the corner up there, get the corner down here. And I start somewhere into it. And then when you go back up, you're not gonna catch the corner. And then this is ready. And we're just going to trim this off. And now there's that. So these are gonna go for this card. And then if you guys do decide to make another card, you already have your triangles set for the next card, which is pretty awesome. So what you can do is just set, so this is the peach or the petal pink one. So you could grab your pieces. There should be six of them actually. You could put them in your card kit like that. All right, so that's too short for that. Okay, so we have one left and it is this green piece, these, this, this, I like that paper a lot. If you guys watched the monthly class, I think it was two months ago, um, we did this one. Hi, Jeannie Parker. I'm at the varsity football game watching your son. Awesome, I hope he does well. So this one is a little bit finagling. <laughs> um, I didn't worry so much about the pattern matching up. So to do this pattern, like, to have a pattern that it doesn't have to line up is a really good concept. Um, so you have two pieces here that are the same size and then two pieces here that are the same size, okay? So like these are one inches, one inch here and one inch here, but then this height-wise is one inch and one inch, all right? So let's get the number of what size it is. Um, it is one by two and seven eighths, and I like to always just double check. So this is two and seven eighths, and then this length or top, the height on this one is four and an eighth, okay? So I did want my patterns all going the same way though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off um, an inch and an inch to create, so let's just, let's just cut two inches, okay? So, two inches by, what did I say, um, four and an eighth. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four, and an eighth, and I'm just gonna go a hair past it. And then what I'm gonna do is four and an eighth. I'm trying to just cut a little section out of here is what I'm trying to do. So four and an eighth. All right, so do you see what I did? I just created a little wedge. So this is the four and an eighth, which is my height by two, and now what I can do is just cut this in half. And that gives me my two sections here. So what I was trying to do was I have, you don't have enough here because you need a one inch and a one inch, which is two, and because that was four and an eighth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work off of this side over here, and I'm gonna cut off two inches from here because again, it's one inch and one inch is two. So this one's probably kind of confusing. Ultimately at the end, we're just getting four pieces. So this is extra. We don't really need this. Now the, the width of this was two and seven eighths. So let's cut two and seven eighths. Hi, Christina Bernards. So there's that. This is extra. And now we're gonna cut this in half. Now you could have cut yours already at one to begin with. 
Um, but there's our one by two and seven eighths and one by two and seven eighths. That's it. So ultimately, hi, Angela, this is yours. I hope you don't mind. I'm cutting up your kit. Um, so your DSP is cut. Thanks for sharing too. I didn't think you would mind, Angela. <laughs> so I have all your pieces all cut for you. Um, and so your kits are pretty much ready to, to go then. So, all right. So I think that is it for cutting of the paper. So that's the outside. And then this is your inside. So what we're going to do is put those in with your card kit, you guys. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get making our cards. So this is the one that has, must be, oh, I think I mixed these up on Angela. So let's grab, hmm, nope, it's the white one. No, what is it? What? Oh, ah, I get it. I get it. This is the right one. Boom. Okay. I was like, I'm momentarily confused. Okay. So this one goes in here. Thanks for sharing, Christina. All right. So now your card kit should have all the designer paper in them. And you are ready. We're going to get rocking and rolling on stamping. So I think we're going to save this one for last. And we're going to do this one first. So I hope that was helpful on the cutting, you guys, um, so you can see how the how that all works. Um, just don't be afraid. <laughs> and again, practice on, um, just practice on some white paper if you need to. Uh, you were canning tomatoes and Pauline was working on zucchini today. Woohoo! My mom was working on tomatoes today too. So for this one, you guys, on all the different cards, I tried to use the different sentiments, and they're all about the same size, so they're pretty interchangeable. So on this one, I did best of luck. So I have that over here. So let's grab best of luck, and we're going to be using the Knight of Navy ink. And then because these are photopolymer, um, I punched out everything. So this is the bundle. It comes with a punch. And hi guys, you can see me. Hey, <laughs> it comes with a punch and it comes with a stamp set. And that's what we're using um, on these. And so let's grab this stamp right here. So that's what is the outline. It comes in that. And on this one, you guys, I pulled in one other thing. This bow sprig punch thing here, that was in soft succulent and that was in the rose gold foil. All right, so let's see what you have here. You have a soft succulent face. Hi, Rhonda Morgan from Phoenix. Woohoo! All right, so you guys, it's already cut at eight and a half by five and a half. Scored at four and a quarter. You just need to take your bone folder and burnish your edges. You're going to want to make sure you kind of keep this card horizontal. Uh, we generally do a lot of vertical cards, and so um, we're going to want to make sure we keep it horizontal for the inside especially. So you have a piece of white that is going to go on your inside. You have a Knight of Navy. These are both the same size. They're four by five and a quarter. That's your outside mat. And then you'll have your DSP that you just cut. So your, we just went over this. I believe we had one and five eighths by three and three quarter, those. And then you'll have your blue piece that gets put in the middle like that. In your kit, you'll also have your petal pink um, that's already punched. You already cut your little strip for the bottom here. And then in your kit, you'll have your um, little sprig in soft succulent. And then I'll show you here, the rose gold is super cool. It's a rose gold foil. And so those are already punched out for you. And you'll need to grab your ribbon and also um, your embellishments when we get that far. So I kept these very simple on the inside, you guys. I just used the designer series paper to accent the bottom. So. Um, if you don't use best of luck, you could use anything else. And what I would recommend doing is stamping a sentiment on the inside before you glue the strip of designer paper down. Because if you stamp it and you don't like it, you can flip it over and use the other side. So once you've got that done, you could go ahead and take your liquid glue or your tape runner, whatever you prefer to put paper down with, and put that on the bottom. So these are cards that somebody will win for watching my uh, class with me tonight. Um, I have uh, I have the four cards from Celebration Hoorah Rah that we're going to announce who won them. If you cut your designer paper just a little too long, you can always take your scissors and just trim that little excess off. Um, if for some reason the white is too short, um, or excuse me, if the DSP 
um, well, if the, if the white is too long, you can trim the white if you need to. So how do we want to glue these strips? I love the cards that have these panels like this. And um, the trick that I've found to do is instead of gluing them either left to right or right to left, is I glue the two outer ones first, and then I center the middle one. And that makes it so that it, it's centered better in my head. So I'm going to flip these over and prep them with their glue and with using liquid glue. Um, hi, Lisa, Curse, I'm glad you like the cards. By using the liquid glue, it allows you to wiggle them. So I'm just gonna kind of think, get them right where I think they are, uh, gonna go. And if I need to wiggle them around a little bit, I have just a little time to get them centered. <laughs> so, um, and I could still peel it off because it's not quite dry, but I do the left, I do the right, and then I do the middle one. And ultimately I try to just center the middle one and it looks pretty close. So then you're gonna grab your tear and tape and I like to do that little tear and tape sandwich on the back. For those that are new to me, uh, it may seem excessive <laughs> to use as much uh, tear and tape as I do, but I have gotten cards in the past where people have used just a little bit or even back when I um, was stamping many moons ago, I wouldn't use uh, like tear and tape on both the card base and on top of the ribbon and the ribbon would start to pull out. So um, yeah, isn't it, Laura? The colors are just, oh, they, like they really did go with this. I would never have imagined putting these together like this, but somehow Stampin' Up! must know which colors go really good together. So what I'm doing is I'm attaching my ribbon and you see I held the card this way versus putting it upside down and trying to put my tails on. By holding the card, I can visually have a straight line for my ribbon and then I just tuck my tails behind. And it was about, if you're wondering, um, some people like things to be exact, uh, it's about an inch from the bottom. So in case you wanna know, then I like to put that second piece of tear and tape over each end here. And that's what I call my tear and tape sandwich. And what's gonna happen is that ribbon is not gonna come out <laughs> at all, I promise. So then we can just grab a little bit more liquid glue and I finish off with that. Yeah, the tear and tape just makes it hold it so much better. And then you can have a little wiggle room to get this centered on your card. Lovely in linen, yes, Kathy, you're so correct. It's so pretty. Um, all right, so we gotta do a little stamping though. Oh, well, why not? Let's get our inside glued in. So I'm pretending that you guys have already got your inside sentiment if you so choose to have one done. And then once you're all set for that, that goes on the inside. Um, you guys, I thought about giving, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I thought about giving you a piece of Knight of Navy to, to have a double mat in here. And I was all out of Navy paper, so I couldn't even do that. I was so sad. I was gonna surprise you with a double mat on the inside. And the girl, this girl ran out of <laughs> navy paper. <laughs> All right. Hi, Marianne from Green Bay. All right, so Knight of Navy. Because this is photopolymer, you guys, you can see through it. So you get two chances at stamping on this. And if you don't have this stamp set, you do not need to put these dots around it. If you wanted, you could take a sponge dauber or a sponge um, and just put navy ink all the way around the edges to give it the navy look. But if you have this stamp set, you would take your Knight of Navy ink and I would, it's, it's, because it's photopolymer, you can see through it, but it's still gonna take a little practice. What I do is I kind of line, I mean, you might see my head pop in here because I'm, I'm gonna try to get in and see here. Um, I kind of wiggle it around until I feel like I've got it exactly where it needs to be. And I try to go straight down with it and let that ink marinade hit the paper and let's see how it goes. Okay, so if you don't like the way you stamp it, then all you have to do is flip it over. Now, because it's being punched, it's not like a die where you have a rolled edge and a rough edge, you have a punched edge on both sides. So if you feel like you are not happy, you get another shot, you guys. So just patience like let the ink like hover or the stamp hover over the top until you feel like you got it exactly where it needs to go 
and give it a shot. Now, if you don't want to take another chance and you'd rather just sponge the edges, um, you can definitely do that too. But um, I know that I've got a little bit more showing on one side than the other, but I think at the end I'm, I'm good with it. So, so that is the outline. And then what I'm going to use is put, uses the best of luck here. So cool. Best part of the set. <laughs> the outline is awesome. So here's our best of luck right there. And again, if you weren't happy with that side, you could always flip it over and re-stamp it. But I absolutely love the fact that this set is photopolymer because you could see exactly where you're stamping. So that's it for the Knight of Navy on this one. And what I did for the final stages of putting this on here, um, I like to use dimensionals to pop things up. So I'm going to put Oh, I didn't pick which side I liked better, but I think I'll go with this side. So I'm going to put my dimensionals on and take them off on three corners. So the, the left I picked off and the other bottom one I picked off, but I'm going to leave the backing on this one for the moment because I want to be able to tuck my little leaves in there. So I'm going to center this and got that down and then you've got these leafy things so I do like popping things up so we're gonna grab that goes there so we're gonna grab I feel like this is stuck together okay <laughs> it is so let's get you off of there and find a little section that you can use for the leaves and we're gonna this is getting a little picky. So if you don't want to worry about cutting little pieces of dimensional, then you could just glue this flat. But I do like things popped up when I can. So I'm putting little sections of dimensionals here. And then what I will do is put a little glue dot at the base. And because I didn't peel off that backing for that dimensional, uh, it allows me to pick this up and kind of tuck this in there and then I'm going to use a glue dot for this one and again because I didn't take that backing off yet I can just pick this up and set it right in there and now that I've got my two things in there that I want I went in there grabbed the back and then I can squish it down and then I have them exactly where I want them <laughs> all right ah, let's get you out of there so the embellishments now so you guys have a full pack of embellishments you will have plenty left over to keep making more cards because you're going to have more designer paper and just adding in a few colors of cardstock, you'll be able to make more with this. But what I did with this, I loved these soft succulent ones over here. So I pulled in and put them right on my ribbon, right on the left and the right side of it like that. That was my favorite part of this, I think, putting those two on. Now, depending on how you cut your paper, I've got a gem like in the middle of this section and a middle of there and there. But you might not have yours cut that way. So I was looking down here, I don't really have that, but I do have a little circle right there that is a blue color. And so I'm gonna take one of the dark blues and put it right on that. And I feel like it's still at a diagonal. And then over here, I've got two blues, which could work um, just fine. And I think I'm gonna use a big blue one at the top and then a little one at the bottom, right, well, not the bottom, but the one diagonal. And then, per Linda, I need to remember to Stella the leaves. So grab your Stella pen and definitely get a little of that Stella. Um, it's too hard to Stella on foil, but you could definitely Stella your green leaves. Now, the other thing too, you guys, you can Stella your ribbon. <laughs> so. There's no reason why you can't put a little Stella on your ribbon um, to give it a little pedazzling. Uh, the other thing too, I didn't think of doing it beforehand. There is a little fuzzy that I need to get off of there. I didn't think of it beforehand, but had I thought of it, I would have Stella'd my whole label before I stamped it because then you don't have to worry about, like if you do this, you have to be very careful not to catch the blue ink because it will smear it. So 
All right, so get that Stella on your card. If you're feeling like you want more gems, you guys have a whole package of them that you can use more. But I was happy, I, I put five on it. So you guys, when we do ink, paper, scissors, I generally <laughs> don't just keep it to three embellishments. I generally use five to seven, even nine, depending on it. So, and you can see my Stella pen, I had just filled it up with rubbing alcohol. So it's a little wet and that's why it looks dark there. And eventually that will dry and lighten out, but it'll still be very bedazzly. So you guys, this was all about the designer paper, showcasing designer paper um, and knowing that it's like a, net, a normal size mat, five and a quarter by four, and then it's three and three quarters high by one and five eighths makes for the good um, sections here. So, oh, thanks. You guys like that one. So one done. Woohoo! Okay, so we'll set that one over there. And we will go to our next one, which I think we're gonna do this diagonal one next. The kit for that is the one with the petal pink base. So make sure you grab that card kit next. And you have all the triangles in this one. So you guys, normal card base, eight and a half by five and a half. For those that got the kits, they're already folded. Just take your bone folder and burnish them. Another horizontal card. <laughs> and same kind of concept with the designer or for with the card stock, you guys. We have a navy one and a white one. Um, if you are the like the type that likes to do that double matting like we do, this would be an opportunity. Laura was a silly girl not getting this kit. Oh Laura, and I had to going into it. So Laura, if Audrey doesn't end up taking this kit, because I'm still on standby with her. Laura, if Audrey decides against this kit, it's yours, okay? So I have to wait till I hear back from Audrey. So if you guys like the double matting, if you have a piece of Knight of Navy at home, you could cut another four by five and a quarter and trim this one down and you could do a, like a double mat on the inside. It would look amazing. I ran out of navy paper, so I couldn't delight you guys with an, a double matting on both of these cards, but I wish I would have <laughs> not ran out of navy paper. So needless to say, I have five packs that came in since then. Um, so, um, all right, triangles. So you will have also, you guys, you cut your designer paper for this. So you have a, a navy mat for that one. And you have in this kit your white label. And then you've already cut this strip for the bottom. No. If you want to stamp a sentiment, I highly advise stamping it first and then gluing this strip down. If you're not going to stamp anything on the inside, go to town on gluing your inside in. Um, you might just look at it to see which side looks better up. I'm going to go with that one. And so because of the liquid glue, it gives me that time to get it exactly where I need it. Yes, Ann Bellinger, I know. You and Julie Biersbach and Diane Bogenhagen are my double matters. <laughs> so I had to throw it out there. I had all good intentions on wowing you guys with double mats on these. And then I went to go get my paper and I didn't have it. And so we didn't do double mats. <laughs> so, all right, we have here all these triangles. And so I like to do the two like more long triangles first. So you guys, for those that are new, I love to, if I'm opening up the glue bottle. I like to glue a few things at once. Yeah, Carla, these are awesome color combinations. I would have never thought that, like I had never really used petal pink so much in my life as I did before, you know, until this class came along. <laughs> I didn't know I needed petal pink in my life so much. So there's the inside, right? and then these guys. So when you glue these, you don't have a, a lot of space. So you do wanna glue it about a 16th of an inch from the edge and then center it top to bottom. You guys, I'm a righty, so I like to switch things to accommodate my right hand here being my, my master hand um, in the process of assembling. <laughs> so, so there you've got those. And then what you can do is we'll flip these over and flip this over. And again, let's get glue happy. So we're gonna put a little glue behind that. And then that triangle, and that triangle. So again, you guys, if you wanted to pick different color patterns together, like this, what's awesome about this kit? The ink, paper, scissors, it allows you to be your own creative boss and not necessarily go with what I did. And so you gotta be careful with these triangles that you get them 
the right way because these kind of are about the same um, length for their sides, but you can kind of tell there's a longer edge and then that gets put right there. All right, that's it. So that it's important to keep that that sixteenth of an edge and then it should ultimately give you about the same in the middle. All right, so then this can get flipped over and we'll get glued right onto our card base. So that's a, I refer to this as a mat and then this is my card base for those that are newer to stamping. So that goes right there. Okay, so then this one, when you get to the end of your dimensionals, you guys, do not throw your edges away. You better be using them because if you're at a class with me in person and you throw those edges away, when I empty your garbages, I will take those out and I will use them myself because they work as good as the inside actual little dimensionals. So uh, just don't hesitate to use those. Oh, Doris, yeah, the colors are great. So this has a direction to it, though. Remember, you've got these little flower things, so you don't necessarily want to put it upside down. So it's important to look at your imagery before you glue it. Um, it's like the corners kind of meet, but they don't necessarily meet those lines. And so I'm going to set it there and figure out, well, do I need to come down, go up? I'm going to try to get that centered as best I can. So it's about the same distance all the way around. And now we get to do a little stamping. So grab your, you know, so it's really important to use this piercing mat or the foam mat, especially when you have photopolymer stamps because it, it provides that other little extra cushion for your stamp. And so we're gonna grab the little polka dotty outside or outline. All right, you guys, you gotta hover over the top again, get it lined up. When you get it, oh, I think I was off. Hang on, it's off a of hair. Now, if you don't like it, you have a second side, hopefully, that you can use. Okay, it's okay. I started to put it down and then it caught and it was crooked. And so you can see I a little, schmess, uh, a little mess up there. So flip it over. Again, if this doesn't go like trip your trigger, just use a sponge dauber or a sponge and sponge the edges. So it's care, you, you wanna go hover over the top, but don't go down so far that you catch it. Because with the photopolymer, it is pretty sticky. Okay, <laughs> fingers crossed. And good, all right. So the thank you is what I did on this one so that it used another sentiment. So we're gonna ink that up. <laughs> if you want to, practice on your bad side first just to make sure you're happy with it, and then go for the gold and actually do the side that you want. And like that. Perfect, okay, so we're gonna shut the ink up. And there's a little bit of this polyester pink ribbon on this card, and it's just woven back and forth. So how do we do that? I'm gonna put a little bit of tear and tape on the back and I'm gonna grab a, another piece to have on standby for when I'm ready for it. So pick that off and you don't even have to cut it. Just just leave a little extra because you know you're gonna need to cut that edge. The, the gap in the middle is so small that I just went up, down, oh, I went down, up, down. Sometimes I will do weaving it back and forth and going across once. And what I mean by that is I go like this, catch the middle, bring it back, right? So I did that, so I'm going across it once and then this way and bring it back this way. Now, that is a lot of finagling back there and it's such a little bit of that you're hardly even saving anything. So in this case, it is a little bit easier just to weave it back and forth. Oh, this ribbon is so cool. So take it and then I'm gonna trim it and we can play with it before we actually finish this. So I can, you can look at it and be like, oh man, it's a little bit too diagonally for me. So kind of pick it up and you're just gonna rearrange it and bring it over into the middle more, okay? Something like that. Oh, and then drop it and then start over. <laughs> All right, so, 
we're going to bring it up. <laughs> I might as well start over. So there's that. And then this one goes down and there. So you can play with it till you get it exactly how you want it. But again, it's just weaving it back and forth. Um, I can see here that I'm more to the right and that's okay. You guys, it's not every card is always going to turn out the same, right? So we're going to do that and that. And so you've got this little piece of tear and tape on standby. That is to put it right over that to help hold it in place because that's ultimately gonna go on here. But I am going to, there's a little bit of height going on here in the middle. It's about the same as the height of a dimensional. So what I'm gonna do is take and add a dimensional on each side. And I'm actually gonna do an, another one where that tear and tape is. Let's grab the right scissors. So, because otherwise, if the tear and tape catches your card, it's gonna wanna like sink in in that area. So, I'm gonna do that. And then this gets flipped over and put right through the middle like that. Does so that make sense? I hope it does. Then grab your ribbon scissors and trim your tails. So, I like to always cut them at a diagonal. And we're gonna cut this one right at a diagonal like that. Okay? This easy, you guys, right? I think cutting, I'm gonna trim him just a little more. Cutting the triangles is probably the hardest thing that was part of this card, and we did that right off the bat. But it's another fun layout that adds character because you have those triangles. And so grab your embellishments. Oh, for Stella Ng. Oh, we didn't do it. <laughs> I'm going to put the Stella pen right in front of my face because I want to show you how to do the label. Um, but on this, you could Stella any of your designer series paper, right? Because it won't bleed. You could Stella the edge of your frame here like that, right? So do that. Trace it like that. And then you could also do your designer paper. Um, I'm going to skip my label, but you guys, you could also go over any of, you know, the triangles here, any designer paper, you can always Stella that because it won't let it bleed. So we're just going to do a little wishy wishy over that. Okay. I'm going to set this right here. So I remember that for the next card because we'll do it on the next card. Okay. The gems. So we have, I did five of them on this one and like here, that's perfect. So on here, I did a blue gem, but there's a sweet sorbet one that is in that same spot. So I'm actually going to put that one right in the middle there. Um, this one is right above it. You know, it's right above and below. So I don't want to do that. So I'm actually going to grab the soft succulent ish one and put that over there. And over here, there's really, oh, there's a blue. So I might just grab one of the small blue ones and put that right on that circle. And I'm going to grab another sweet sorbet. I want to say sherbet, but I know it's not. So we're going to put that one there. And what other color would look good? No dark green. Um, so I'm going to put a petal pink one right on the corner up here, right in the middle. So again, you guys, embellishments are always whatever you personally want to do to add to it. But because you have a whole sheet of them, you might as well use more than normal. <laughs> so, all right. Fun card. Um, just oh, the, the pink ribbon just really gets me. I love it. Okay, so we're leaving that there so I don't forget. So there you guys have it. We got two cards done. The designer paper is what is the like makes these cards look so awesome. All right, so this one is a little bit different of a fold. It opens like this. It's like a, I call this the arm. So if you got the instructions from me, I refer to this thing as an arm because it goes up and down. So with that kit, it's gonna be the one that has all this green in it. So it's evening evergreen. Hi, Maria Gilbertson. I'm so happy you love this card. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. All right, so this is your inside piece, right? So that's your inside. And then you cut yourself a little, li oh, I wonder if I did it. Oh yeah, there it is. So you have a little strip of designer paper that goes at the bottom. And then we have our arm. You guys have yours folded already. Um, it's eight and a half by three and three sixteenths. And you just have to burnish it. 
Your designer paper is the three by four that fits there. Uh, this is a quarter sheet of paper, five and a half by four and a quarter, and this is your traditional mat, which is four by five and a quarter. And then you have your strips of designer paper that fit in those sections like that. Oh, thanks, Shirley. And then you have your two labels in your card kit. So there's two punches, and we just, you know, put, put them going opposite directions so that you just another way to use the punch, right? Um, and then you'll need your ribbon in a bit, and um, we'll stamp. So, hi, Mary Harnicky. All right, so do not get glue happy and glue this piece down. We have to get our ribbon down before we do that. So, but if we want to get glue happy, we could glue these three things right now. So let's um, let's get them together. So that one goes, this one goes. Um, Stella first, yes. I'm gonna put it right over the top of that so I don't do it without it. So that one, you know what? As long as I'm at it, we're just gonna do that little guy too. So guys, learning to glue multiple things or put your adhesive on will help you from closing and opening that all the time. So that goes here. The little one inch strip goes on this side and you're gonna have the top, the bottom, and the left being the same margin. And this one you're gonna do, it should be an eighth of an inch, top, bottom, and right. And then this little guy goes on the bottom. If you wanna stamp, stamp before you put your glue on, or you know, put this little guy on, because then you can always flip it over. But that goes right down here, like that. Let's see about this, trimming this off, like that. And our little arm, that can get glued, and then our inside. You guys, so once you have the paper cut for this, this card goes together lickety split. So here's our arm. Oh, Becky, I know. I don't think you did, and I asked you, and I think you had wanted um, splendid thoughts instead. I think that's what you had decided. So yes, I know. But you guys, I do have a PDF tutorial for this class, it will be in my online store probably by tomorrow. Um, so you could always get that. Um, you could pay for it or you could get it free if you place a, I think I have it, a minimum $20 order. You could get the PDF for free. So then you'd have all the measurements written, you'd have the pictures, you'd have instructions, and you could always make um, your cards on your own. Um, just think about all the possibilities with these layouts too. You could use other designer series paper as well. And um, this piece right here, the reason I didn't glue it yet is because there is ribbon and the ribbon goes behind it, behind it. So we're going to just cut a little section here. And as long as I have the ribbon in my hands, I'm going to take and just make a little loopy. It's like a one single knot. And we're just going to get that set off to the side. I'm going to trim. So that's going to be for that um, extra piece there. So we need our tear and tape, which was under my hand while I was looking for it. I'm gonna prep two pieces. Um, Becky, I did try calling you right before class and um, I'm not sure if you saw it. Oh, we're gonna connect hopefully after class though because I know you tried calling while I was in Shipshawana and <laughs> um, we didn't get everything figured out. So. Oh, if you're, hopefully you're available after I'm done with class and we'll figure everything out. So this is gonna go here and then that little guy goes on that. And again, you guys, I looked at it from the front to make sure my ribbon was straight. And for those that are inquiring, sometimes you like things, it's about an inch and a quarter from the bottom. And now I've got these two ready to go. And we're going to now adhere that to the top of the arm is what I, referred to that in the instructions. So this goes here and, okay, per perfect, Becky, I'll give you a call after class. Um, so this is gonna go right on here like that. Okay, so that was a lot of assembly, you guys. That was like, so far it's shaping up, it's coming together. What we're gonna do is do our stamping. And so, <laughs> thank you for the reminders. So this is what I mean by Stella in the label. You need to do this before you stamp because then you can Stella this whole label 
and you don't risk getting ink bleeding everywhere. Carissa taught me this actually. Oh, you guys see, we all learn from each other and don't think that I know everything. I pick up on little tips and tricks from anybody that I possibly can. And so I was stamping with Carissa one day and she's like, you should sell the label first. I'm like, oh, that's a fabulous thing to do. So this whole label is Stella and I know you can't even tell in the video. It's just Stella never does justice by looking at it. But this whole thing is like glitter. I wonder if I hold it like that, if you can see it. That's how I can see it. Oh, you can't. I'm looking at it. It's hard to see it, but try it at home. I, I encourage you to try that at home. So we need to clean though, because we were just doing a whole bunch of Night of Navy and we need to switch it on over to be evening evergreen so let's get you clean and as long as i'm cleaning let's get you clean and oh you could see it linda awesome okay i'm glad i couldn't see it but it doesn't mean that you guys can't see it all right so then we're gonna do this one as a thinking of you and in the kit you guys i just realized it in the kit there's these little dots <laughs> you had to use them so Let's pull off best wish or best of luck and put you, so you guys, I do store my stamps right on the inside case. I get rid of all that cellophane, but it, and that cellophane stuff. Um, grab your piercing mat or your, your, um, your foam mat. I put a piece of scrap down. Um, <laughs> not yet, but evening evergreen first. And we're going to inky dinky do our label. So you guys, third time's a charm, hopefully by now. <laughs> you have it figured out. Hi, Kathy Jackson from Iola, Wisconsin. All right, so hover over the top till you get it exactly where you want it, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, <laughs> I did good on that one. Okay, then, because I really wanted to use those little polka dotties, I thought, well, why not put them all over in the middle? You guys, a brand new petal pink ink pad. My other one was weird. So I am gonna stamp off because it's a little dark and I'm gonna do second and third strength. And you have to be careful. If you're stamping and then you hit the green ink, it's gonna pick up some of the green ink. Hi, Tracy Groovy. So when you stamp on this, just know if you like put any of your stamp into the, the green ink, it will pick it up on the stamp and then it might go back into your ink pad or it might go somewhere else. So I'm trying to avoid hitting that green edge. So you could have done the petal pink first, but ultimately all I did was put some splattery background on there. All right, then we're gonna use the Sweet Sorbet. You guys, I kept this class, I think, to four, uh, four ink colors, so it wasn't a lot. So we're gonna do the Thinking of You in the middle of this one. So if you guys are newer to stamping and you start to use photopolymer stamps, um, just know that they do take on this pink undertone to them and that's normal um there's something called conditioning your stamps so that it's like less pink but honestly from my perspective as long as it doesn't leave a pink residue when i'm stamping i'm completely content with that so what i mean by this pink residue is you know stamps start off completely see-through and clear but if you look at this it's got this pinky undertone to it and even though it's pink, when you go to stamp, there's nothing there. So that's just, it, like these stamps get this tint of a color with them. All right, so we've got our stamping done. Oh yeah, so cool. So everything's so Stella-y. So what I did, I popped up, let's see here. That is missing its stick. So we're gonna put a dimensional there 
Yeah, I'm so wanting to you. You guys, it's such a sense of accomplishment when you finish a sheet of dimensionals. So I cut them bigger. So, <laughs> so that process gets it happens faster. So I'm gonna put the two dimensionals on this. Punches sometimes leave a little snaggle tooth. If like it's so little, but you can see there's a little fuzz hanging there. If that happens, you guys, all you have to do is take your scissors. And you could just trim it off if it bothers you. It happens with punches that sometimes they leave a, like they pull at it funny. Um, so we're gonna put, I gotta hold this up and do it. So we're gonna put this uh, together like that, right? If, if you aren't happy with it, you can always, which card are you on? Kathy, we're on the third card. I have one left to go. So um, we've got this, these two are done already. So we've got, we're on the third and we're gonna, we're, we're going for um, faces loaded right now <laughs> after this one. All right, so there's that. And I did put the label a little more to the right than to the left to leave a little space for that ribbon right there. Um, yeah, Kathy, definitely catch the replay for sure. So because there's ribbon here, what I'm gonna do is make sure I put my adhesive on the top and uh, the bottom so that it catches the paper for adhering. I wanna save a little room for a gem over there and I think something about like this. So, like that. And we have the heat from your fingers really helps for the glue to bond to the paper, like the papers together, so that helps. Now this little guy, I just, I, I cut that a little earlier. I'm just gonna use a glue dot. And guys, sometimes if you don't like to use your fingers, you can use your pokey tool and pick them off and then put that right where you want it. And then you can set your little knotty bow thing, <laughs> whatever you wanna call it, right into it. And push that good. Now, this one's hanging up a little too high for me. So we show it who's boss. Grab another little glue dot and I'm gonna put it right on the paper and I'm gonna set my ribbon right into it and I'm gonna do it on the other one as well. Penny, I'm gonna rip that paper off for you so that we don't have to look at it. And then I'm gonna put this other glue dot right on the paper there and then set it into it. Now that I have that done, take your ribbon scissors. I did that one really nice, and I'm gonna trim this guy at an angle. So then I've got my little ends done, and they're nice and secure. Oh, we stella it, but we, have, we can stella some more on this one. So you can stella your ribbon, and it amazes me how you plan as you go along. It makes ears are one of those because I forget to do that. Yeah, so um, it, it is. Like when, it, when I'm designing cards, I always try to think how can I add ribbon to a card? And so I don't generally complete the card until it's done and I figure out ways to add ribbon. So I don't glue everything down until, like, until I figure out well, where's the ribbon gonna go. It's very rare that I don't put ribbon on a card. So it does happen, um, but I try to figure out always ribbon. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put, um, so here's your choice. If you, I, if you wanna, s you guys have a lot of embellishments left. I used a bunch on my other cards. I'm gonna use the small ones on the side here in the sweet survey. So then I don't have any left, but that's okay. Cause the next card, I use big ones. And um, I have green ones here on the side. So we're gonna put, I tried to find where the intersections were for these. So I put one there, and then I'm gonna grab a big one and put it at a diagonal. And then I have one more up here, and he's going to go right there. I looked for where the little lines were matching. Um, good evening, Linda Bailey. Thanks, Cindy Runtree. Uh, I, I'm good, I'm guilty of glue happiness. Yeah, <laughs> Kathy. You and everybody else loves to get glue happy, and that is okay because then you just learn how to improvise more. So, because I'll be honest with you, if you can avoid being glue happy, your ribbon tails can get glued down easier. So, all right, 
so that's what we've got, you guys. Yeah, I was, this one I was a little uncertain of if you guys would like the color combinations, but I showed it to my mom and my mom liked it and she said it was good. So <laughs> my mom, oh, but I think my mom always says that anyways, <laughs> that everything looks good. Um, she went to, I, yeah, I don't know. Mothers usually don't say things that, oh, that doesn't look good, right? <laughs> so, but she's, the way she said it, I believed her. So, so you got your evening evergreen, soft succulent, sweet survey, and petal pink are your featured colors for this one. And that leaves one more card, you guys. Just a final glimpse at that one. And we'll roll right into what my mom would call the gourmet card. And the gourmet, this one I'm going to make you work for it, you guys. Uh, this one's going to be a little finagly. And then when you open, like the inside's really easy, right? So no problem on that one. It's this outside that is going to take a little bit of work. But we're going to get it. And the reason it's going to take work is because the stamp is one stamp and you're going to have a little bit of cleanup on aisle nine in between each one of the stamp colors. So, all right, grab your card kits, your last card kit, and you can see that by the magic of TV, I've already done my fussy cutting, but we're going to go through the process of doing that. So <clears throat> you need here, um, oh, so this is a suite in the catalog, the annual catalog. And we didn't really talk about this to start off with, but for those of you who don't know Stampin' Up! very much, um, there's a catalog. All the suites are listed in the front, and this one is called Lovely in Linen, page 24. So all of these things that we're using come from this suite, and the suite has the stamp set, the punch, the paper, and this, you know, it's quatre foil, quarter foil. <laughs> don't ask me. I was calling it a quarter foil, which I don't know if it is, but it's the embossing folder. So I did pull it in on, I pulled it in on this card and it's this piece right here. So you guys can kind of see what it looks like there. That's the money shot. That's what that embossing folder looks like. And it's a six by six. So I apologize that I only used it on one little piece. <laughs> I couldn't figure out where to pull it on on the other cards, but at least you get to see it so you can decide if you like it or not. You've already cut your four little designer strips for the outside. Now this one, you guys, I do not want you getting confused, okay? Watch this. You're, this is a confusing card. And I'm gonna show you from Angela's why it's confusing. So when you open this card up, you guys, You've cut your designer paper, but if you look on the very top is a big full quarter size mat. I can't get my eyeballs to go back in their socks after seeing the size of the stamp we were going to work with on this. Ah, this is going to be a learning experience, you guys. You called it. Okay, so this is where confusion is going to come in, you guys. There's a white piece on the top, which is for your stamping. When you open your card kit, you have another white piece. That white piece is for the top layer, okay? And then you open it up further and the bottom white mat is for your inside. Okay, I hate doing this to you, I really do, but there are three different white mats in here, all three different sizes for three different purposes. Again, the top one, take it, set it aside, it's what you're gonna use for stamping. The next one, you're going to be gluing your strips of paper onto the white piece, along with that, this little guy here. And then the other white piece is your inside. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Ultimately, if you do one backwards, I, it, I'm sure you're gonna improvise with it. So we're gonna take that, set that off to the side, just so you know that's what's going on. Okay. So in your card kit then, you have your white piece here for stamping. You have a little label. This comes from um, All That Dies. You've already cut your little strip for your inside. You have your designer paper that goes there. And then you have your white mat. Now, how do you know which is which? You'll know this when you, you know, your petal pink is already folded burnish it. You'll know what fits where because this one fits as a mat here. Okay. And then you'll know 
that that DSP, oh, I cut that wrong. Oh, I'll have to trim that. Okay, and then the outside one, you'll know which one that is because if you put the white piece to it, it's just slightly smaller than it by that much, just a little bit. And you'll know the biggest white mat is the equivalent of the card, and that's the one that you're gonna use for stamping. Set it off to the side, and then I would layer your stuff so that you know, right, where it goes. So I did realize that I cut, so what I cut earlier was Angela's. What I'm cutting now is mine, and it needed to be at five inches instead of five and a quarter. So now I'm back on track. So what we're gonna do so that we have this all straight is we're gonna glue some things. So this is a happy birthday card. So if you want to put a stamp of sentiment in here right off the bat, and then if you don't like it, flip it over, okay? So we're gonna glue some of this stuff together so that we can have less pieces floating around. <laughs> okay, so get your glue or whatever you're gonna use. and That's our designer paper that goes right there. And then we're gonna glue that little strip on. So there's no pattern to this non-directional in my eyes. So that's going to go on here, right? And then your little strip of paper here can go on here. And again, if it's a hair short, just trim your white. And if it's a hair long, trim the edge off, right? Um, again, stamp beforehand. But whoever gets this card can always stamp their own sentiment on the inside because this will be a prize. And then this will get glued on the inside and flip this over. So that's gonna get put on the inside. So you have your card base and soft succulent, right? You're gonna open it up. The glue is on the back and that gets glued on the inside. So the outside soft succulent is your traditional base. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. The petal pink was eight by five and a quarter, scored at four. And then when you open it up this way, this is your inside then, okay? So that just put a whole bunch of pieces together. So it's just cool. It's like, boom, there's more. Oh yeah, there's the inside. Okay, these kind of cards make me happy. All right, so then you'll know this white piece here is it fits just barely. Uh, it's not a traditional mat. It's like four and a sixteenth by five and five sixteenths. So it's like a sixteenth lo longer on each side. Okay, so then you can lay these out so that you kind of get a feel for where they need to be, get, where they need to get glued. Okay, there's not a lot of wiggle room. I promise you there's not. So you're going to want to make sure you kind of visualize because you want to have a little white everywhere. And then that guy fits right in the middle. Okay, something like that. That like that's pretty much it. So just it's so much fun <laughs> when paper doesn't look all the same, right? So when you have these little extra white chunks that are there, it just creates character, I think. So I know that it's a very little margin of glue, and I'm gonna do just a couple at a time. It's really good to have pattern um, non. How what's the right word? So paper that really doesn't matter about the pattern, right? So. We saw how close we needed to go to the edge. So something like that, it's just a little white showing on the edges. And then this one, just like the same, something like that, All right? And we're gonna flip these two and put the little glue on the back. And again, you guys, if you were just tuning in or you didn't see us cut the paper in the beginning, um, I talked about the measurements for it. So um, I have those all discussed early on. And so then this guy's going to go right there. Okay. And then lastly, our embossed piece can go right in the middle. So <laughs> that's the easy part about this. No directional. Yes, non-directional DSP is good for this or like, because you can see that my 
it looks like it's all uniform, but when you look closely at it, you can't see, then you can see that they don't really match up, right? So that this is a perfect paper for that. All right, so then this gets flipped over and we'll put some adhesive on the back of that. And now that will go onto the front of our card base like that. Okay. Right. You guys, that was called getting glue happy. Okay, Kathy Jackson? <laughs> um, that's it. That's getting glue happy. Like All this card is pretty much, now we've got the meat and potatoes, okay? The stamping. <laughs> so you needed that last mat that is a quarter sheet, you guys. It's the exact same size as a quarter sheet of cardstock. And you're going to want to get your piercing mat. And this is important business now, the stamp. Stamp is crazy because how do you get all these beautiful colors to come together like that? You have to stamp them all. And by watching this, you're going to see how they fit perfectly on this sheet of paper. So ultimately, you want this flower in the dark and this one in the dark and then this one and this one in the petal pink and then your greenery. So... Um, and there's certain ways that you're going to have to do this to fit it on here. And I would recommend, um, I would recommend, I don't know what I'm going to recommend doing first, um, the greenery. The, what's most important is that you clean your stamps in between, the clean the stamp in between each one. So um, there's a fuzz and we'll get that off of there. So, and then it got all over me. All right. So the green, again, you don't need this flower necessarily green. You don't need all of that green. You ultimately are looking for a section of it to be in green. So when I'm putting this on here, I really don't care about this flower here or that one because we're going to be fussy cutting it out by the magic of TV. Like ultimately, that's what we're trying to get out of the stamp. So ink this up and I'm going to ink it again because I like to sometimes go like this it gives it just a better image so okay now it is important that you don't get ink all over your piercing mat so we're going to go like this and we don't care about the flower right so we're going to just put this on here like that okay give it a second for that ink to transfer to the paper this is all we need for evening evergreen okay we're gonna need okay then stamp off to help keep the ink out and you're gonna need to clean it because you definitely don't want getting your green ink getting in to your sweet sorbet so I'm gonna also now flip this over and use my really really clean side <laughs> to make sure I don't have any remnants of the ink okay so we're gonna flip that back like that. Okay, so now you've got a little sec, there's sections left here to get four more flowers. So we're gonna need to get that flower and that flower. So let's go for those next. And I'm only inking up the section of the stamp that needs that color. You don't need the whole thing. So you ink that up. Now, can I fit it over here? No, not really but I can fit it right here. And I wanna make sure, like that doesn't matter if I hit it, but ultimately I just wanna get that flower right there. We're gonna be fussy cutting that out. Okay, there's one. Now, because it's that same color ink, we don't have to worry so much, but it is important that you clean it because you don't want that ink going over some of your other good areas. Okay, so let's clean it. And again, I'm going to flip it over and use my really, really clean side. And now we're going to ink up that flower right there. So how are we going to do that? We're just going to find the section where it is. Okay, got that inked up. And going over to here, we're going to stamp that flower right there. Okay, so I gave you a whole quarter sheet of paper. <laughs> Hopefully you can make it work. So there's that flower. Now we're done with this one. So let's shut this up and we're going to really clean this good because we're going to the lightest color last, which I really wanted to do the lightest color first, but I didn't want to have to worry about it not, all the other stuff not fitting. 
This way, we're gonna sneak these other little flowers in on the paper. So clean it up really good. And we need to ink up with petal pink. And we need that flower and that flower. So let's grab that little guy. Oh, it's a juicy pad. I just got this petal pink pad. Oh man, okay, because my other one was a weird color that it turned into. So we want that pink flower there. Yes, Penny Powell has a perfect idea. Say that 10 times fast. So Penny said to use your ink spots. So the little baby ink spots that you get in your paper pumpkins, that would be the perfect thing that you could use to ink up little sections here. So you can see I'm going over to get that other little flower and that other little flower is gonna sit tight right there. Okay, so here's your piece of paper, you guys. You're gonna cut out that flower and now you can cut out that flower. Cut out your leaves, okay? You don't have to keep the whole flower there. I actually kind of trimmed some of it off. And then you're gonna cut this flower off and you're gonna cut this one. This is Frankensteining your flower, you guys, yes. So you've got this whole piece of paper and now it's time to cut those specific pieces out. I got mine done. I did it right before, I did that right before class actually. I was sitting here at like 10 minutes to six and I'm like, oh, let me cut mine out really fast. So now you guys, you don't have to watch me cut, um, cut my flowers out. But one last thing, this is a happy birthday card. And so the last sentiment that I used that fit in this little oval is happy birthday. Happy birthday. And so it's Dar's birthday today. Happy birthday to Dar McCarthy. Um, Barbara Godby was yesterday. She was an August 31st birthday girl. If you guys, anybody else, I, I'm sorry if I missed you. If there's anybody else that has a birthday today, you can give yourself a shout out. Um, we like to celebrate another year around the sun, you guys. All right, so there's our happy birthday. And we might as well, let's just set that guy there for now. So. I hope in now what you guys are gonna do, take your little paper snips or any kind of scissors and cut those all out, okay? And when you cut them all out, you will have these little guys here. Oh, you're very welcome, Dar. All right, so let's go back to our card here. So what I would do is grab my dimensionals and we're gonna ultimately, I popped these all up on here. So. Um, Linda Hall, you had your birthday on the 29th. Woohoo! Okay, I'm going to put some dimensionals right where these flowers are going to reside, right? And this one's going to go here. And then I've got, oh, I'm almost done with these now. So I put some dimensionals on. So this flower is this peachy one. Now, I learned something in the process. I did think after the fact that that little uh bud thing is part, it should have been green. Um, so on my card that I made for tonight, I cut that little section out and I left it green like that. So there's that one. Now this flower fits right here. So oh, I gotta peel the backing off. Yes, happy birthday to our lovely ladies. All right, so this one goes here and then pick that backing off on this one. And this flower will reside where? How's it gonna go? <laughs> it's like round and round we go. Where we stop, we will not know. Um, I feel like, <laughs> hang on. This one, I felt like, there it is. Okay, it's like, if you don't know what it is, just go around in a circle till you get it. And then this last guy right here is, on here. Again, I cut out the, I notched out where I thought that should have been green. So that is going to go right like that. All right. So that's how we get our flower put together. So you can see I cut off some of that green section so it wouldn't be hanging out the edge. And now I can be really happy because I just used up my sheet of dimensionals and that can nicely go into the garbage and feel good about it. And so now we got some extra dimensional backs on here and Let's get those little guys in the garbage. And now, because I've popped up those flowers, I'm gonna use liquid glue on the bottom of this. And we'll put a little glue there, there, and there. 
And then uh, two things. Figure out where you want your little label. Um, you could angle this this way and have your um, little sentiment there, or it looks really cool this way and also putting the label over on that side. So you've got a little figuring out to do. So I'm gonna leave mine angled like my sample here. And when you get it figured out where you want it, just kind of set it down. Sad thing about it, you guys, is I get it. The embossing gets covered up. <laughs> I thought about it after the fact, but I thought, you know what, we're still gonna do it because then at least for those who got the class from me, you can see how cool the quattro foil or quarter foil um, embossing folder is because you might not have seen that yet. This way, and you do see a little sneaky peeky of it right there. Okay, so the ribbon is lat next, and we're gonna set those guys there. And I think we're done with the ruler for the moment. Okay, so the ribbon. Let's talk about how we're gonna do this. You need to have a little ribbon or tear and tape on standby, and it's like it goes up, it makes a loop, and it comes down. So let's talk about that. So put your tear and tape on the back side. I got a little extra, we'll use it up. So you're gonna have your ribbon come out, the tail like that. Okay, so it's catching the tear and tape. And then you're gonna make a little loopy. Okay, so you're gonna catch it with your finger and then it needs to come back out. And if you like it off to the side like that, or do you want it in the middle? So I was aiming more for the left side because there's a lot of stuff going on the right. So I think I'm gonna leave it like that and see how it turns out. So grab that tear and tape that was on standby, put that on the back like that, take your ribbon scissors, that's paper, and let's trim our little tail. So I've got this one going this way, so I'm gonna do this one going this way. Hi, Barbara Gadby. Happy birthday to you. I know it was yesterday. Everybody said happy birthday to you already <laughs> in case you missed it. So I'm going to take that tear and tape and just so I don't have to waste it, I'm going to put it right on the ribbon right there. And I am going to take that tear and tape off and put a couple dimensionals on the back side here. And let's, before we put it down, let's just look to see. Oh yeah, that'll look really nice. Okay, so you guys have a bunch of ribbon left. You can make lots more pretty cards with it, I promise. You're going to love it once you start using it. I bet you could even color it. It's uh, such a light color that I bet you could use blends or sponge daubers to add color to it. So we're gonna stick this thing right about here. And, oh man, it turned out really nice, okay. If you want to trim your tails, you probably could. You're very welcome, Barbara. If you want to trim your tails shorter, you probably could. Like if you think that they are a little too long, you could trim them up just a hair. So there's that, and there's that. All right, and then, you guys, we're down to the finale here. Our embellishments and our Stella Ella Ella. All right. Of course, I didn't remember it because I had, <laughs> so if you would have stamped your little label, I mean, not stamped, if you would have stellaed your little label before you stamped it, that would be perfect. But I forgot to. So I'm going to do what I can see of my embossed layer there. And then I'm going to do some of my ribbon. And so you got to be careful with um, this kind of a flower because it, uh, I got little glue on here somehow. Thanks, Sandy. Um, if you, oh, there's glue right there. Gotta get that off. Okay, if you put Stella on this, it's gonna make the flower kind of bleed. So you might be better served just to put a little bit of that bedazzly right on your designer series paper like that. And it's just, whoever gets it will notice it, I think. If, if they're not, they're not looking for it. But if they're a stamper, they would probably catch that. And then we have our embellishments. So what's super awesome is the centers of the flowers. <laughs> I love to put some like gems in the middle. So we're gonna put a petal pink big one. Oh, you guys love it. You're giving me hearts, yay. So there's those. And then I'm gonna save a 
you know, this big pink one for here with a little baby green one to bring out the greenery. And then I think we could do another petal pink over here. If you want to put more, you know what? That's a little light. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to take him off, stick him right back, and we're going to grab another greenie and put that over there because it'll stand out better. This one the best. Yes, such a happy card. I completely agree. All of these, you guys. So at first when I saw the lovely linen, I was like, oh man, these colors are a little bit outspoken. Like they're just very vibrant, but they're so cheerful. You are exactly right. Like when you look at that, wouldn't you love to get a card like that? Oh my gosh. So let's pull them all in so we can see them all again. Um, all the cards are readable. Thanks, Doris. Um, thanks, Shirley. I appreciate that. So let's put this back and grab all four of the cards so you guys can see them. So tell me, I know a lot of you like that one, um, but like, I don't know, there's something that if you guys are looking, um, Jennifer said that the paper is so pretty. They're also pretty. Deb said that they're so pretty. Um, a gourmet card. Yes, Linda Hunt. She, my mom loves it when I have one gourmet one. So you can't make them all gourmet, right? Because that would be hard for people to make all intricate detailed cards. It's nice to have a little mixture um, of, you know, hard to do, easy to do, but all in the end, um, just having some awesome cards. Barbara's going to order the PDF. Perfect. Um, Cindy liked the first one best, which was this one. You guys, all of these are great layouts for if you have some really pretty designer series paper. Cheryl likes the top right. Susan says all. Carla says all. Something about the best of luck. Yeah. So just remember when you have um, designer series paper, these layouts right here would be great ones to feature them. And I love um, doing class, this Ink Paper Scissors series, guys, because I give you that quarter pack of paper and I can design full mats with them or use a lot more designer paper than I kind of do in my other card classes because you guys get to use your paper. You also have the ability to mix it up and match it up and then make more. And then even decorate your envelopes if you want to. So, um, yeah. Oh, I love it. So, it's so hard to pick one. <laughs> All right. So, we're going to do um, the little door prize drawing. So, let me grab my pen. And I'm going to, let's set these off to the side. We've got lots of stuff here to give away, you guys. So, we're going to do a bunch. We're going to do the door prize. We've got monthly class trap monthly class card challenge no monthly creative challenge class card challenge and announce who the top fan winners are we're gonna do the door prize i have the newsletter drawing done already and we're gonna do celebration board drawing so lots of stuff and i have the cards from celebration hoorah rah here to announce the winner so hang tight you guys we got lots of drawing like lots of prizes and people to announce so all right First thing we're going to do is unplug my phone because it's now officially charged. Yay. <clears throat> we're going to go down to um, um, 40, uh, 40, here's just my deal. I'm going to do 48. Audrey would be number 48. And if 48 happens to win and Audrey does not take the last card class, it goes to Laura Sullivan. So I'm waiting for her to confirm um, if it is in fact what she wants to do. So we're going to put 48 in and we'll see. <laughs> um, just because either one or the other would win it. So um, I'm going to flip the camera down and we're going to do a random number generator. So let's do this. And we're going to put in 48 in here and see who wins. All right. Um, I don't know. Let me just check. I don't think I was frozen. So Barbara, you're asking if anybody's frozen. I am not frozen frozen. And so I think I'm good. I think that um, nobody else is then hopefully it might be just your phone. Uh, so we're going to put 48. I'm going to click the word generate and number 22. Yay. Hilda now you're the door prize winner for, I just put a dollar sign. I was going to write door prize, um, ink, paper, scissors. Yay. Hilda now Congratulations. Okay. So there's that drawing. And then 
let's do this real quick. Da -da -da -da! We're gonna do the drum roll for these four cards. If you guys missed this class, it's called Celebration Hoorah Rah. They were four fun folds. I did it on uh, August 19th, okay? Winner, winner, chicken dinner of this one is Elizabeth Groats, G-R-O-T-Z. Elizabeth, woohoo! Da -da -da, drum roll this one. This little bit of fun fold goes like that. Uh, goes to Ethel King. Ethel, you're the winner, winner, chicken dinner of this card. Uh, this one, da -da -da, with the hippo, hippo, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas, with the flipper flopper. Um, the, oh, and it's got some adhesive on here. Let's get that off of there. Yay, okay. And this one goes to Doris Munson. Yay, Doris. I have your address. I know where to send that. Oh, Ethel, it's been a while. Um, you'll have to maybe remind me your address, and I don't have Elizabeth, but this last one, da 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 Oh, the camper card, you guys. They ran out of those dies so fast. It goes like this, and the winner is Kathy Larson. Kathy, I have your address, so I know where to send these two cards for sure. Ethel, if you want to do be a, a doll and send me your address, I would love it. And if anybody knows Elizabeth or Elizabeth, if you're watching, I do need your address. So... Congratulations to you guys. So let's flip up here and we're going to do, oh, I have the Be Happy Stamper Team Challenge too. So let me, all right, let's do this. Oh, I'm gonna announce some things too, you guys. So the Be Happy Stampers, we have some beaversaries. Uh, congratulations to Rhonda Ayers, three years, September 9th. Diane Bogenhagen, three years on September 19th. Congratulations to both, or I should say all five of these lovely ladies. Um, Shauna Burns, September 7th, one year. Susie Stocks, September 7th. They were B twins, um, September 7th as well. Jeannie Parker, congratulations, September 12th, one year. Christina Heiser, September 24th, one year. And Jean Frederick, one year, September 27th. Yay. So we have um, five B, ver oh no, six no, five, six, seven beaversaries. Yay. Okay, so we're gonna flip down here and um, announce the top fans, you guys. I did a little drawing earlier, and they for top fans for August are Miss Arliss Knoop, Judy Immel, Sherry Pyre, and Gwen Petrashek. So they all win um, a little prize from my stash of Stampin' Up goodies. So again, that was Arliss, uh, Judy, Sherry, and Gwen. Congratulations. Facebook is still being stupid about me not being able to pull a list and then do a random number generator. So I did it before class. Um, so yay. Um, also, for the Be Happy Stamper team challenge, we had four people that submitted entries for a fun full layout. So we're going to do a random number generator and we're going to do it live. So we're going to put in here. Oops, that's not it. Oh, you guys are going to see my password. Oops. Okay. So we had four people. So the winner, uh, winner chicken dinner da -da -da, for the Be Happy Stamper team challenge is Number one, Tracy Sorge. You are the winner for the clam, the Be Happy Stamper Team Challenge. Okay, next we're gonna do the monthly creative challenge. So let me show you how easy it is to find it, you guys. Um, the class card challenge, monthly creative challenge, two different things that I do on a monthly basis. The monthly is there's specific themes and you have to submit a card, like take a picture, submit a card, and then you get in on the drawing. The class card challenge is um, cards for the current month and the previous month. So August was July and August classes. Once you finished putting your cards together from a class that you paid for from me, submit pictures. And I'm gonna show you what people have done. So just to show you guys, you go into Facebook and it's at the top of my newsfeed. So when you go into my Facebook business page, the very first post, which is pinned at the top, is challenges. And when you click the see more button, I have links. And so when you click on the first link, it's the monthly creative challenge. And if you look at the comments, you can see like Vicki Tillett, Sherry Pyre, Vera Anderson, Tammy Stecklin, Steckling. They all submitted their cards for the challenge, right? And so I take everybody's name and I put them in and we're going to do a random number generator. The class one is right underneath it. And so you click on comments and this is where you would write a comment. You take, so here Millie Kindle did that class. Pat Detlefson did this class. 
Karen Wettstein did Ink, Paper, Scissors last month. Penny Powell did a class. And so Vera did a class. So I took everybody's name of people who finished classes and we are going to do the drawing. So now that we're done with this month, then what happened was I created the new uh, post for this month. It's right here. And I'm going to pin that to the top post. So now you guys know that I've just replaced the top pin post with the current one, which is September uh, 1st through the 31st. And the class card challenge is cards from August and September. And lo and behold, you guys, there are already people who have submitted um, some entries. Um, and then also in the class card challenge, nobody submitted anything yet, but that's okay. There's a whole month to go, you guys. It's the first of the month. So with that being said, that's where, that's where you find that stuff. We had 12 people that submitted cards for the monthly creative challenge. And da -da -da, number eight, the prize. Oh, and here's my rule, you guys. In a single night, we can't have multiple winners because I like to share the love. That has always been my rule. Hildenau, you already won a prize for the door prize for ink, paper, scissors. And so what I tell people, if they happen to get their number picked twice, go buy a lottery ticket. Um, um, I was just reading Mary's comment that she can't add a picture anymore. She doesn't get that little camera up on her daughter. Also tried to help too. Did you try from a different device? Sometimes if you can't do something on your phone, maybe you can do it from a tablet or maybe you can do it from a computer or a laptop. So I always encourage people to try something else. So if you can't get it one way, try another way. So, but back to Hildy. Hildy would agree with me too to pick somebody else for this because she's already won a prize. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to click generate again and it goes to number five. Anna Rubadoo. Woohoo! Anna, you are the winner for the monthly creative challenge. We had 17 people submit entries for the class card challenge. Click generate number six. Oh my goodness. Hilda now. You are number six. <laughs> you would have walked away with the whole gamut of prizes. So we're picking somebody else. <laughs> Go buy a lottery ticket, right? Okay, so number six, you guys, what's Hildy? Oh my gosh, Hildy, you lucky lady. So we're gonna click generate. Number 17, Jody Storman. Woo! -hoo! Okay, Jody, um, you are the lucky winner for a class card challenge. Anna is monthly creative challenge. Tracy is the Be Happy Stampers. Arliss, Judy, Sherry, Gwen, our top fans. Now, the newsletter drawing winner is Miss Tracy Sailor. Solar, Sailor. I've never asked you, Tracy, if it's Solar or Sailor. It's S O E L L E R. Solar, Sailor, Solar. Uh, I'll have to find out. But, Tracy, uh, there were how many people? Hang on. I had 11 people who answered my secret hidden question in my August newsletter. And so Tracy won a $10 gift certificate um, from for Stampin' Up! product uh, through me. And it does happen with Hildy, doesn't it? <laughs> um, so, so, with the, so what happens, you guys, is I write a monthly newsletter. I've only missed one in the last, since I started. It was, oh, maybe I've missed two in probably six years, but I missed July. So in August... Um, I started it up again. Um, when, July was just a busy month. Uh, so I always put a secret hidden question in there. And you guys, it was awesome. If I asked for people's favorite childhood memory to share it with me. I had some, I was crying on some of them because it just hit home. And it was so good, you guys. It helped me to get to know some of you better. And it was, because I always say what my childhood memory is. Like, whenever it comes to the question, I always try to answer it and then, you know, say it or I talk about it in a live. But it was your favorite childhood memory. And so it made me really think of my grandparents a lot when I got to read some of the memories. And so it was awesome, you guys. So when I ask you those questions, I don't mean to pry or like, you know, if you don't ever feel comfortable answering it, you never have to, right? And they're not always personal questions. Sometimes it's like, what's your favorite sweet? Or what's your favorite new ink color? 
newsletter or what it, you know, but it's something to engage to make sure that, you know, people are reading the newsletter and maybe you might just look for the question and, and answer it and not read the newsletter. I really don't know, but uh, I, I put a lot of time and effort into writing the newsletter. And so it makes me feel good knowing that some people read it. <laughs> and especially if I make a mistake in it and you guys say, hey, you know, you did this wrong. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're reading it. <laughs> don't try to do things wrong in the newsletter, but sometimes it happens. <laughs> so um, Tracy was the winner for the $10 gift certificate for the August newsletter. Woohoo! Congratulations. Um, we're not done. We have a celebration board to do. And how we're going to do the celebration board is, um, board number 11 was full. It's all 25 people. So, um, board number 12 has 13 people on it. And so what I did is I pulled out 13 of the numbers, the the numbers one through 13. So what I did is I pulled out one through 13 here and I have one through 13 here. These are the people that just placed their orders with me. Oh, I would have to say yesterday. All of these came in either yesterday or like, like the 30th late at night. So I am so appreciative you guys. We rocked it during celebration. Um, your support was just awesome. Never ending. And just, I couldn't Thank you guys more. So I'm going to try to pull up um, the video so I can keep watching your comments with me. But you guys, it was um, an amazing celebration. Um, when does the newsletter? So before I do this drawing, Mary asked, when does the newsletter come out? So it's always in the beginning of the month. And I can never tell you exactly the day that I do it. I, if I was on my A game, I would always say the first of the month, right? But what I try to do is I try to have my first Facebook Live class in the month, and sometimes that is on um, the 3rd or the 4th or the 5th or the 6th or the 7th, and what I always do is I announce the top fans, the the winners, right? And so it's usually the the right after the first Facebook Live class of the month, the newsletter comes out within a day or so after that so that I can um, get all that stuff in the newsletter, announce who the winners are, and so... The first is on a Thursday, you guys. So my goal is to have the newsletter tomorrow published sometime by midday or by the end of the day. And it's always emailed. So if you're not getting emails from me, you want to sign up to get my emails. Um, I also share it on Facebook um, in a post that says, hey, the newsletter is available. Here's the link to go read it. And the newsletter is stored as a PDF in my newsletter and files section on my website. So that's where you get it. And so also I email the PDF to those people who get my newsletter. So, um, but it usually comes out after the first Facebook Live class of the month. All right. So good question though, Mary. Um, in the past, sometimes too, it gets a little late. It just depends on what crazy I've got going on, good crazy I've got going on with everything. So I try to get it in a timely oh, fashion, I should say. All right, so I pulled out numbers one through 13 here, you guys. So we have that here. And then we're gonna do number, so this is number board number 12. Now we did half of a board. So this is for a $10 gift certificate, you guys, right? It's not gonna be for a full $25 because we got half the board. And you know what? We're gonna do 15 just to round up and that's fine with me. So we're gonna do here, da -da -da, which one do I wanna pick? Oh my gosh, okay, this one. Number five goes to Gail Kane. She is our number five winner. So Gail will get a $15 gift certificate. And then let's put all the numbers one through 13 back in here. All right, drum roll. Brrr. All right, this might be the last thing I have for the night. I'm not quite sure, but <laughs> we're gonna see. We're gonna look around and see. All right, and the winner, winner, chicken dinner. You guys, this is my old school way of doing drawings. <laughs> all right, here's our number. Number 12, let's look to see who it is. Miss Barbara Barca, woo Barb. You are the lucky winner of number 11. I'm writing a note. Um, you get a $25 gift certificate from me when you place your next order. So you guys, I think that maybe out of 12, so that's 12 winners, um, you were actually board number 11, Barbie. Yep, okay. Um, out of 12 winners, I think three or four of you have used your gift certificates. And so what I'm looking for is everybody to use those gift certificates in the month of September. So uh, good through the end of this month. Um, so yay. 
Congratulations. Okay, so what's coming up after Miss? Okay, so you guys, Mystery Card Night is next week, um, the 8th, I think, with Kelly. And then the following week is going to be our celebration celebrations um, in person and online and also the monthly class uh, for September. So um, I know a bunch of you qualified in the last day or two. I think I've reached out to you guys. I'm thinking I did. I, I might not have, but I'm still working on that. So um, I'm definitely going to make sure I have everybody figured out. If you got an email that you qualified and you can't make it the night of the Facebook Live and you still want the to-go kits, you guys, you don't have to be live with me. Um, you could always make it based off of the Facebook replay, right? So um, to qualify again, it was $150 in sales with me um, as your, as I am, as your upline I'm not your upline. As your your Stampin' Up demonstrator, um, you couldn't order them through yourself. I had a couple of people on my team um, place their own orders through themselves, uh, but that wouldn't be an order to me. So just a little clarification on that. It's $150 of orders through me as your demonstrator. Um, I had Mo sign up to be on my team and she placed her first order. And so I use this as like a learning and training ex um, exercise for my team, new team members. Um, and so that's awesome. And then um, for my team, I didn't have anybody on my team have two people join their teams. But if you're on my team, the Be Happy Stampers, just know that the team meeting that we have in October on the 2nd, the make and take is this picture frame. And um, if you are attending in person, it's automatically like that's what we're doing. For those of you who would like the make and take mailed to you, there would be $6 for postage um, for me to get the make and take to you. Um, and then you could still get the kit that way, okay? So just know that if you're on my team and you didn't qualify, we have a way to make it happen that you can do the frame and it's via the team meeting and paying for postage or attending in person. So yeah, so I hope that makes sense. Um, what else? So, oh, in case you guys missed it, this is what I am kidding up this coming week. Mom and I are kidding up on Tuesday, um, tomorrow and um, Tuesday. We have the monthly class. So if you guys haven't signed up for this and you're wanting to do these three cards, you'll please reach out, get signed up so I can get your kits to you on a timely fashion. And then this is the Let's Just Stamp, and that class is uh, like the 13th, uh, 14th maybe. So these are the next two that are coming up. Um, I got a bunch of you signed up already, but um, in case you're still on the fence or you weren't certain, please reach out to me so I can make sure I get your kits um, sent to you so that you have them for class. So, oh, 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 oh. Um, <laughs> Congratulations to all the winners. Take a deep breath, right? We made it through another ink, paper, scissors, fun night of stamping. Um, Laura Sullivan, if you're still watching, I'll reach out to you once I hear back from Audrey to let you know if I have this kit for you. Becky Gandolfo, stay tuned. We're going to talk, um, give you a call, and I don't know. You guys, um, it's Labor Day weekend, so I don't have another class. Me personally, um, Kelly's doing mystery card night. You guys, I don't have class again until I think the 14th of, no, I have club night on the 13th or the 12th of September. So I've got a few more days off here to <laughs> work on stuff, but it's Labor Day weekend, you guys. So a lot of people um, go off and do things. And so I kind of take this time. It's back to school time. People are camping. People are doing their last hoorah, rah summer vacations. And so like this class was perfect to do via online. And then we're kind of like taking a break. Break. Mystery Card Night's another online class next week, and then we're back into in-person and more card classes that second week of September. So, oh, you guys, maybe I shouldn't say this, but maybe I should. For those of you like Donna and Rose, and I know there's more of you that watch me from Canada, I met a lovely lady who is a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada, in Canada, and we talked for a bit. And we came out with something. We haven't ironed out all the details, but we're talking about exchanging classes. So she's going to do teach one of my classes and do kits for one of my classes, most likely the Sweet Bundle class in Canada, and offer the kits to go. I don't know how she's going to do it exactly. Um, and then she's going to do uh, some technique cards for me. And I'm going to start a technique 
club class, kind of, uh, and uh, so an offer that to people in the United States. And then we can market. Basically, she has her U.S. friends that watch her that they can ultimately get her cards via me. And then my Canadian peeps that watch me that want my classes can do this one class via her. So that's all I'm going to say for now because we haven't con- we've we talked for about two hours. Um, Friday night, but we haven't ironed out all the details yet. So we might start that in the beginning of the new year and do it from like January on and see how it goes. Um, um, so we're going to take these next couple months to kind of iron out the details and get some plans going. And so we were, I, I've been trying to figure out a way because I know you guys love my, those in Canada love my, my style and um, those in the U S like her style. And so we thought, well, this is a great way to not create more work per se designing, but to offer another class without the extra designing, right? Because you guys like, designing is half the battle. It's like the, it is a very time consuming part of card making and to design another class would be like oh, for me. But if, if she gives me everything that I just need to cut and prep and market it, like that's, I can handle that and the vice versa for her as well. So super exciting with that. So, um, um, I'm not going to announce who it is yet because I don't, it's not sealed, right? So the deal isn't sealed. Um, I want to make sure that, um, that we're good to go before I announce who it is and that we announce it at the same time. So it's like a little bit of a, you know, like a sneaky peeky little, um, information for you guys, but I am not going to announce who it is yet because I just want to make sure that I don't get the cart before the horse and then the horse trip all over the cart, right? <laughs> so so hopefully you guys understand that. So I, I know a bunch of you are asking who it is, um, but I want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row and we kind of have a plan of attack and um, a time frame and that we both announce it to our um, prospective customers at the same time. So yay. All right. So I've always wanted to do like a technique club where you guys get like a sheet and it goes into a binder and it has the example of the technique and the name and um, so that you guys have a little collector thing that you can always refer back to if you're looking for a fun technique thing. So, whew, okay, you guys, I feel like uh, I got a hot mess going on here. So um, create with friendship. Yes. Oh my gosh, Sandy. We should call that that series, the Create with Friendship series. Like that's what I might do because uh, ultimately I'm going to give her credit for what she designs and she'll give me credit for what I design. And honestly, I don't care about anything. Like I don't even care about that really much. I just want to get you guys in Canada being able to make my cards and she wants her customers in the U.S. to make her cards. So um, cross all the T's and dot all the I's before you announce it. Right. Yes, exactly. So And that is, she is, I have it on my to-do list to make sure we get that ironed out. So, all right, you guys, take a deep breath. Wish you guys, oh, so going back to it, Tuesday, we'll have a tip Tuesday for you. And then um, on Thursday, you can expect Kelly for next week. Um, So, all right, you guys, have a great Labor Day weekend. Lots of love and sunshine and hugs to you. Be safe. Um, um, make lots of beautiful things and make dinner, (laughs) make whatever you want. Just enjoy your weekend. Right. All right. So you guys have a good night. Love you so much. Bye.